Sup, my fellas. Don't forget to leave feedback and enjoy the story. We see the thoughts of the hero. Now he's going to live for himself. School, study, rote learning. He will never return to it again and will not study anywhere. At least that's what he thought. He is riding horses with a man who points his finger forward and says that they are almost at the best Imperial Magic Academy, Einrogard. The man riding beside him, Arlor Long, was very moved. He thought that he had become a useless old knight, but he had the honor of accompanying the young master and watching him grow into a fine young man. And now Einrogard was acting, as if the boy himself did not want to learn. He was unable to break his connection with learning, even in this lifetime. We see the guy's last graduation. The classmate is very happy that the school is finally over and the young man himself cannot believe that they graduated with their teachers. He remembered what they called him to join the camping club, and he frantically denied it, saying that he didn't deserve to attend such honorary meetings, or how he promised the professor to finish his work by the evening, and he knew that he wouldn't get any sleep again today, just as they had eaten the same kimbap for weeks on end. His classmate is sure that every student goes through this, but the guy is somehow different from them. He walks with his friend, they chat about life, he asks if he wants to get a second education because he believes that student life is very suitable for him. The young man denies that this is too much for him. He goes out on the road and continues that he was just doing his job and he will never study anywhere else, but is going to live for himself and will not approach any other educational institution. A truck flies behind him. The man behind the wheel tries to brake, but the brakes fail. The boy in a stupor looks at the car that is flying at him at great speed. The truck hits him. The certificate, the diploma, became just useless pieces of paper, but his decision remained unchanged even after reincarnation. He was reborn as a boy, Lihan Vardanus, the third son of the House of the Empire's main magical lineage. He remembered everything from the past. The fact that he was reborn in a very powerful and rich family brought tears. Probably he was rewarded for all his efforts in the past life, and this is his chance for a peaceful existence. But he was so wrong. The first rule of the new family was that the first son gets the inheritance, and the rest must find their own way in life. We have two goals in front of us. One of them is held by a man, and the other by a young gentleman. A man named Alrarlong can't believe that the boy himself asked to teach him how to use the ball. He thought it would be useful, and there was nothing else to do. Fortunately, the family supported their sons in all their endeavors. The boy wants to become a magician, not a knight. He thinks it will be best. He asked the man if his answer was too ambitious. The man said that he admired the boy's intelligence, and most noble children are unnecessarily ambitious from a young age, and he is already planning a prudent future, in the night squads, in the adventurer guilds, even in the imperial family. An experienced wizard is always welcome. A person who has passed the path of a graduate student cannot but be a realist. There's a place that trains people who want to become mages, and that's the Imperial Grand Magic Academy, Einrogard. We go back to when they arrived at this academy. He understands that he still does not want to study, and he will have to endure for several years. The man says that he can do anything, even the patriarch praises his talent. The young man does not believe in this because he forbade him to practice magic, because it is dangerous for children. Then the man with the horses is forbidden to go further. He stops. Behind the guy, carriages pass by, voices are heard from them, telling people to disperse, because they are carrying honorary people the daughter of a duke and the imperial son. The young man believes that a lot of people have gathered, because Einregard is a place where a person must enter alone. Someone replies that this is all wrong. He sees a guy standing behind him who is very worried and angry that he won't be able to sleep without his servants. They're like arms and legs to him. It's the same as cutting off his limbs. The hero says that he understands the guy, and laughs at the nobleman. He runs up to some girl and says that in the name of equality, they even accept slaves he will write a complaint from his family. The young man is interested in what they will say to him. The girl turns around and uses mind manipulation magic. The guy is remorseful. Since these people can use magic against the nobles, then the rest of the rumors that our hero has heard are true. Like the fact that this place is full of monsters, they will bury him in the mountains if he dies. The gates to the academy swung open. Someone said, Welcome to Einrogard, you stupid steelheads. The young man realized that this was the monstrous magical pressure that was rumored, Headmaster. Everyone present froze with tension. The director told everyone to go in alone, but it doesn't matter. If they don't want to obey the rules, he will make them follow. He went on to explain why everyone was standing there, how idiots they should move and go in, and repeated the magic skull three times. It was our hero's first day at the greatest magic academy in the Empire, but he had a bad feeling about it. 
Students walking down the corridor were indignant at the way the headmaster addressed them. The young man was addressed by someone. It was the girl, Yoner Makin, whose family, like Vardanyan, is a house of magicians. The guy was happy to meet her and asked how he could help her. It turns out that His Highness, the Prince of the Empire, wants to see our hero. I waved to him from the crowd and smiled. In such a place of development and socialization as this academy, connections are built on the first day. His Highness has more than a hundred children, but even in the imperial family, the throne passes only to the firstborn. Most likely, the emperor does not support his children at all. We can say that their life is worse than the life of our hero. Together with the children of great families, how did the emperor's children appear? The status is lower than Yonar Mackin. Why was she acting like this and helping some incomprehensible prince? The other students whispered. She invited the young man to follow her, who agreed because there is nothing wrong with making friends. He thinks that it is better not to make enemies on the first day. She was overjoyed and thanked him, so relieved that he was the first to agree. She ran to the prince. The young man put his hand to his forehead in indignation at himself and his stupidity. Guaynando 97. Imperial prince rumor has it that he may be 101, but he is confident in his position. The desire to be in the top 100 is absolutely understandable, only here it has not yet grown. The prince asked if the young man was listening. He apologized and asked him to repeat it, as he was in his own thoughts. He revealed that someone had rejected his offer. How could he have dared? The hero suggested that he simply did not know about his majestic origin. A grand background means a person of a prestigious class, he explained. The smug prince agreed. Now the guy thinks that he is not only immature, but also a complete idiot. But the boy continued to be indignant because they refused him, and now he's sucking up to Adenart. She's an imperial princess or something, elegant and as befits a member of the imperial family. People are drawn to her, and someone is its opposite. He asked me to take care of his sister, but the young man said that majestic people do not mock others and the boy should think about it. He asked what he should do first. The guy replied that to begin with, forgive those who refused him, and if he didn't want to, he could challenge them to a duel. The prince was afraid and said that maybe they should not go so far. He forgives them, as befits a majestic prince. The girl admired the guy. He was able to curb his temper, although she, his relative, could not. He understands that they are related, but, but why is she trying so hard for him? The girl said that she would tell you about it later. Then the magic skull appeared and asked if the steelheads had enjoyed their conversation. Someone shouted that it was the lich they had seen at the gate. He is a creature, the result of a great mage's desire to conquer death. The hero was amazed because in front of him was Director Lich himself. He asked the students why he called them steelheads. The princess said this because the symbol of this year is steel. He added ten points to her dorm. She was glad that there is a system of assessment of dormitories. But the director disappointed her and said that to become magicians, you need to learn to distinguish truth from lies. The girl was angry. The first year symbol is really steel, a material that is completely dependent on processing a valuable resource that can be used in different ways, a material that is ideal for beginners. Someone in the crowd was startled, and Skull laughed as they fell for it again. The real reason is that they are all idiots without a gram of knowledge in their head. At his shout, the entire crowd froze, no matter what. Even though he treats them like that, no one can object, because in a place with such strong magical energy, it's hard to even move. But it gets a little better. The hero gets used to it. He stretched his shoulder and turned around. Skull continued that he was too harsh with those who found the strength to come here. He also noticed our hero. He was able to move at such a density of mana. The director was surprised. Everyone had to look at the door. On the left, it opened. It was a dining room with tables set. The director said they could enjoy the holiday and take a break from the long trip. Everyone was very happy. There was a lot of delicious food. White bread. Fat chicken smeared with vegetable oil that was boiled in wine for an amazing taste. Casserole. And much more. When they began to eat, the food disappeared. The director laughed again. They were again led and added that it was time for them to pull themselves together. He had heard that when you become a lich, you lose something, and he was sure that the headmaster had lost a lot. The academy is the birthplace of magicians, and the biggest boost for a developing thirst mage. The lich shouted, and food and clothing rained down from above. He said it was their food in uniform. They were loaves of bread, plates of porridge, and gray robes. Principal tried to argue with the skull. He did not expect such a reaction. If you do not like lunch, you should learn magic and create delicious food yourself. And if you do not like clothes and a wand, use magic. These are the academy's rules. The director shouted at them. Some guy said he could ask his family for things. 
Then the headmaster said that the first-year students were forbidden to go out, forbidden to ask anything from the older students, and said that everyone was free, wishing good luck to the steelheads, hoping that they would become great wizards. Lihan didn't understand why there are crazy teachers of such people in any place he knows best. His professor in the past life had the same glint in his eyes, the glitter of madness. The prince approached the thoughtful hero and said that he did not understand how they could treat them like this and how to live in such terrible conditions. The guy was still in his thoughts. He thinks that the lich is better than that professor. They provide not only food, but also clothes. It will definitely be better here. The prince was yelling at the guy for not listening to him. In the noble society, little is known about the Vardanaz clan, as they focused only on magic and did not have contact with other people, which only increased erroneous judgments about the clan. The prince was still indignant because his servants live in better conditions. He patted the youth's shoulder and walked on with tears in his eyes, inviting him to stay at his mansion whenever he could. Lehan thanked him for the invitation and suggested that we go to the dorm. The academy accepts students regardless of their status as long as they have talent. However, to prevent strife between teenagers, the dorm was divided into four towers, according to the origin. Proud Blue Dragon Tower, the entrance is only accessible to people from noble families. Only honorary nobles, such as Li Han or the Imperial Family, can enter. The Tower of the Unquenchable Phoenix, only for those who have dedicated themselves to the Sacred Flame. This is a place where only priests from different faiths can enter. The Tower of the Thunder White Tiger, it includes only those who are not weak in spirit. In this tower, there are children from knight families. These are knights and wizards, people who are willing to follow two paths. The Tower of the All-Seeing Black Turtle, only those who have infinite patience enter it. This hostel is the most diverse. Commoners, servants, slaves, buffoons, beggars, merchants, and the lower nobility. Residents of other dormitories ignore these people because of their low status. Most newcomers are intimidated, but there are always exceptions. The guy believes that they are the ideal business partners. The boys noticed him behind them and started to laugh, wondering why he was looking at them like that. The hero believed that you need to make friends with them, because the best way to earn money is business, and to become a pro you need to gain experience. A group of three people were discussing the lower-level disciples, how they were even accepted here. Isn't he right? The guy said. Lee Han was outraged that he could be rude to his future business partners. He told the guy that he was a jerk. They gave up everything they had. Forgetting about this, the guy is impertinent. The girl from the company knew that he was from the house of Vardanaz, as was expected of a great family. When the atmosphere improved, all he had to do was make friends. The guys were afraid of his origin. Someone even shouted that no one should look him in the eye. It's dangerous. The guy was startled by their reaction. Someone kept saying that the Vardanaz house has a dragon patriarch and he heard that they have an ancient spirit bloodline. Lehan didn't understand their reaction. Does it look scary? The Yoner girl denied that he had the aura of a decent aristocrat. The guy didn't know about the notoriety of his kind back then. The prince came running and cursed that they had left him alone, and he remembered that he had asked the girl something. She replied that the reason why she was looking after him was because of his mother. That was when I was a kid. The girl indulged, accidentally spilled a drink on the empress's dress. She believed that this was the end for the Macon family. Even a young age is not an excuse for her. The woman picked it up and said that it was okay, everyone was wrong. She asked if the girl was all right. The girl's eyes were wet with happiness. The empress is actually very rich. She gives her money for being so friendly with the prince. A lot of money. The boy was startled. He didn't think so at all. But if it was true, he should be his friend too. The students went outside to the park. It's just an academy, but there's also a lake, a forest, and mountains. The director wasn't joking when he said that they should do everything themselves, Lehan noticed. The other party was discussing whether they would reach the Blue Dragon Tower if they went here. A girl approached the guy and said that this should be their dorm. The young man didn't understand at first, but when he looked up, he saw and realized. It was a gray tower, a pitiful and small building, and all the inhabitants resented such a place. Prince said his servants' estates were bigger, and they wanted to put the boys up here. The guy thought that it would be quite cramped for them here. Entering the building was very damp and dark, more and more disappointed. The hero flew over and everyone around suddenly disappeared. What happened? Where is he? Someone spoke to him. Hello, little wizard. There were a lot of stars around the guy, as if he was in the sky. Lehan realized what happened. This is expected from the Magic Academy. The dormitory is a magic tower. Ask where he can go. Someone told him that the young man quickly grasps. 
Right now, the only places he can go are a private room and a special meeting lounge, which means there are other places he can go. For some, it is enough to know only the name, but to get into others, you will have to try hard. So far, they can't go there. The director has imposed a ban. He asked me to send him to a private room. Someone greeted him at the Young Mage Academy, and he teleported away. In the room, he found a book that said that in addition to the main subjects, he can choose disciplines at will. The final decision is made after the trial month. On one of the pages, it was written that magicians are people who strive for the basics of the world. Even if others offer help, everyone must make their own decision and go their own way. The signature at the bottom is from Ram Gonadaltes, so that's the name of their director. The academy isn't as difficult as Lee Han thought, much easier than graduate school, and the room has everything you need. He was the only one who thought so, while others did not understand how they would live in such conditions. In the recreation hall, the guys were discussing something of their own. The hero wondered where the others would sign up. Yoner said that she wanted to study alchemy. She was always interested in it. Her dream is to open a workshop and deliver her products to the imperial castle. She invited the guy to work with her. Alchemy is not an easy business. He said he would think about it. The empire's alchemy industry is very advanced. From spreading bad rumors about competitors to monopolizing potion ingredients, countless guilds are using any methods in the war for market share. A stable niche for it is probably the best solution. He would like to choose a simpler discipline so that it is easier to get good grades. His priority goal is to become an imperial officer, in other words, a civil servant. The main academic performance and qualifications, what to take absolutely all the same. He is sure that such a passionate girl will be disappointed with his answer. He said that he would try out everything for this month, and then choose, since you cannot take an important decision lightly. At that moment, the prince came running and said that his room had been robbed. There was nothing in it. The boys laughed, but he was still trying to prove that the thief was there. The next day, the hero read a book about the basics of magic, which is the main subject of first-year students, and each dorm has its own schedule. As he walked with the students, he noticed that they all looked sleepy and exhausted. The girl said that they wanted to sleep in normal beds, and the prince was indignant with his unstyled hair. Is it really that hard for them, he thought, compared to his previous life? Isn't everyone imagining that there's no lunch break in the schedule? He recalled from a previous life when a guy gave him an energy bar and told him that it was his daily ration, and he asked them not to look at him like that, because he had to live like that too, but when they were done, there would be a feast waiting for them. Lyon replied that he would kill him if he was too ramen. When the food was delivered, the guy was very happy that it was not ramen, but a beach bag. There was even a triangular kimbap. Remembering this, the young man realized that it was much better than where he was in his previous life. The lecture hall was on the first floor, and when the students went there, they were afraid whether it was a lecture hall because there was a huge blue man inside. It was a troll. Trolls are ferocious, dangerous monsters with a bad name, even among protected nobles. But this one was well-dressed and didn't look evil. He greeted the students and told them to sit down. Everyone took their seats. The troll introduced himself as Garcia Kim, or rather, he was a half-troll. He knows their fear, so he asked them not to worry, and grinned and said that he doesn't eat people and later licked his lips and added until he gets hungry. He really will eat them when he gets hungry. The prince was afraid. The half-troll said that it was just a joke. He excused himself and began a lecture. The teacher began to tell me that most of those present had never used magic. It was dangerous, so only adults could use it. But all of them are now seeds that have received the title of steel. The purpose of this lecture is to enlighten them about magic and help them find an aptitude for a particular kind of magic. The path of the magician is a difficult and harsh journey. Teacher, he hopes to become their guide. So not all the professors here are as crazy as the headmaster. The half-troll started with the basics and asked what magic is. The girl replied that this is the desire of a wizard to change the world by his will. That's a good answer, and it's also about using magic energy mana as a fundamental force to change the world. So everyone traveling to the academy is talented enough to feel it. But to use it, they must go beyond that. They must summon mana at will and weave it together gracefully. Only then will the magic be born. It is usually considered that you need to cast a spell or make a movement. But what is really important is the will. Do not forget this. The teacher thinks that a little practice is needed. He calls everyone to try it and asks them to get up. He says to raise the wands and collect mana. He wants them to present light while collecting mana. Lahan is happy that practice has finally started 
and Yoner is having a hard time, so that's what magic energy management is like. It's like driving a madly racing horse, and if you lose control for even a second, it's all over. The teacher says that while they are concentrating so that the magic does not dissipate, they must cast a spell. With a wave of his wand, he says the word light, and then a bright glow appears that blinds the students. They can say anything that comes to mind, but keep in mind that the shorter the spell, the easier it is to conserve magical energy. The guy learned the essence. The first is to collect magic energy. The second is to transform it with your will. And the third is to cast a spell. He waves his wand and it works, although it doesn't look like understanding alone will be enough. Other students either lose their wand or something goes wrong, and the prince's mana moves on its own. The teacher helps him and says that if you lose control, you can harm others. But as long as there is a teacher who can stop them, they have nothing to fear and do not worry. If they have mana left, they can try again. There was a second attempt, but two-thirds of the students continued to practice. The rest gave up. Light is the simplest spell, but it usually takes about a month, and there are some things that students have to figure out for themselves, so the teacher won't tell them about it. With each attempt, the number of students decreased. After the fifth and sixth attempts, there was only one student left, and Mayan raised his hand and asked if he should continue because he was the only one left. The whole class was lying motionless on the desk. The teacher noticed that they were already on their seventh attempt, and even the outstanding first-year students were running out of mana on the fifth. Magical energy, one of the tribes in the east, is called her key. Scientists who like to show off call ether, and some stubborn priests like to call it divine energy. It is a power with many names, a source of magical power. Due to the mana cost of casting spells, Novice magicians often face a lack of magic energy, but Li Han is fine, despite the fact that this is the seventh attempt. When asked what his name was, he answered with a name other than that of his family. He earned the professor's favor by demonstrating the principle of equality. The teacher asked him to come up and give him a hand, took the guy by the hand. He felt something like he was in a huge expanse of water. The professor froze for a moment when the boy was afraid that something had happened. The professor replied that it was nothing and went back to the lesson. Prince thought that the guy should be saved. Suddenly, she will eat him. The girl told him to be quiet for a while. The teacher asked the young man to come to him after the lecture, and he agreed. He continued the lecture, and everyone felt how quickly they had run out of energy. But because of this, you should not worry as you practice. The amount of mana will only grow, and its consumption will be less and less. Sometimes a highly motivated student loses control and gets injured, so they should be careful, she pointed out to the confused prince. And she doesn't eat students. At this point, the lecture ended. Everyone did a good job, and she thanked them for the lesson. The young man came to the teacher's office. She wanted to talk to him about something. The teacher said that before that, she had heard something about him from the director. From this crazy lich, the guy was scared. He doesn't have to worry. The director looks like a crazy person. He's a good one although the students do not know, but he is very attentive. Every year he tells the professors about new students. He talked a lot about others, but about Li Han, he said that he was very stupid. It would seem that this does not mean anything, but in the East there is a well-known saying. The wise man is stupid, only on the outside, only a stupid view of the world borders on wisdom. Maybe the headmaster was trying to tell her that he saw a lot of good things in him, wondering what the student was like, the half-troll thought. But she couldn't tell the guy that. She called out to him to tell him that he had great magical power. He's happy, but that's all they wanted to talk to him about? It's not that big. The teacher can't even imagine its limit. Mana is one of the indicators of a mage's talent. If it is not enough, then it can be corrected. Although with difficulty, a large amount of mana indicates complete freedom of action, which means a great talent, Lehan realized. The teacher said that it's a pity to have a lot of mana, isn't it bad? No, but you have too much of it, she said. She suggested comparing the magic energy to the water in this glass. It's easy to control, but let's say he needs to deal with a large volume such as the sea. It will be quite difficult, isn't it? The guy was scared because controlling such an amount of mana, the main source of magic, is insanely difficult. She put a bracelet that absorbs mana on the disciple's hand. For the first time it will help him. He thanked her. Now everything should be fine. But it was not so easy. If it was easier, she would not have called him. He should release most of the mana. He can do it alone. There will be no problems due to lack of mana, but he does not like this solution. He met with the guys, but he was desperate. 
His future is darkening. He needs to study well. He needs good grades now. He asked what electives the guys have. The girl replied that of course alchemy, and would they like to join? The prince laughed, because this is only for servants. Maybe she will tell the truth. Still strange. She clenched her hand into a fist and asked Vardanaz to move away. Hitting the guy told him never to ask for a potion. When he was in the hospital again, he flew far enough away. Our hero knew a few things about fighting, thanks to his fencing lessons with Arlar Long. But in his eyes, this blow was ten out of ten. On the way to the basic alchemy comprehension class, he asked the girl if she didn't think it was wrong to hit like that, and she said that she would apologize tomorrow. It wasn't the first time she'd done this, he thought. There were many students in front of them, especially the students from the Black Turtle Tower. He doesn't care, but he is worried about their gaze. When a commoner meets an aristocrat, one of two things usually happens. Either they don't want to mess with them or they show hostility. The kids whispered that they shouldn't stare at him, but what could he do to them in school? If he acts too friendly, it won't lead to anything good. Someone asked if everyone had come. The young man turned his head. He saw the director and professor half-troll. It would be fine if someone came out. The guy fell silent. In front of them was a short man with a beard. He was a dwarf. His name was Urgulm Gaidar. They can just call him Professor Urgulm. He's sure they're wondering why they're all gathered on the field without a single desk. The girl assumed that it was to feel the mana of nature, because the consciousness of the force of nature is important for an alchemist. The professor did not agree. Then the girl got angry. The guy said that it was to collect the ingredients. This answer turned out to be correct. The girl looked at him with a malicious look. Should he miss the fact that he just pointed at the sky? He thought that only the girl wouldn't compete with him because of this. They gathered here to learn what it takes to do alchemy. Most of them probably think that alchemy requires only intelligence and the ability to control mana. In fact, a necessary skill for an alchemist. The ability to collect ingredients. Yoner wrote everything down in a notebook. The princess said that the materials can be ordered or grown by yourself. Saying that collecting is the most important thing is not enough. She did not finish. The professor was very angry. The guys started whispering, The princess is right. They shouldn't do this because it's weird. The professor shouted at them that they knew nothing about the real world, sat down in front of the sprouts, said that they could not grow themselves and 10% of the required materials, and the purchased ones could not be used at all. The reason they travel with adventurers is because they are utter cretins. When it comes to digging up priceless herbs, they turn into real fools. The alchemist should be able to mine the materials himself. If they don't learn it, they won't achieve anything. The professor hopes that he has explained it clearly. They have moved on to practice. After giving out the leaves with a picture of the plant, he told me to bring it to him. Despite all the prestige, there were a lot of unpleasant rumors about him. Dohawk. This is a plant for making antidotes. Yoner had run into him before coming here. One such rumor was that students were dying from using magic. Of course, magic is dangerous. So, accidents are possible. It's completely incompetent to send children to such a place. It was a dangerous place for two people. There should be at least three of them, they reasoned as they sat in the woods. They talked about the princess. It would be difficult to be on the same team with her, and besides, she had already assembled her own team. There were students from the Black Turtle Tower here, although they avoid our hero. The girl said that the princess was popular even before entering. Among the royal family, she is known for her extraordinary intelligence and talent. She has a special charm that attracts other people. So many people, regardless of their status, follow her. They needed to assemble a team. Only the Black Turtle Tower disciples were left. Even though they hate the guy, it's too dangerous to go together. But they need someone who can cover their backs. His eye fell on Nilia of the Black Turtle Tower a dark elf from the Shadow Guard patrol from the northern part of the Empire. The Shadow Guard is made up of experienced hunters and scouts working in the northern mountain range, and they know these mountains like the back of their hand. The forest is like a playground for her. It's amazing that there are so many outstanding students among the newcomers, but now is her time to shine. The boys came up to them. The girl introduced herself, and Laihun said he was glad to meet her. They asked her to go with them, to which the girl got angry thinking that they were up to something because all nobles are the same. They call them savages, even when they are hospitable to them, and still complain that we are disrespectful to them. Why would these guys suddenly be different? The young man explained that it was dangerous to walk alone in case a monster attacked her. If he didn't need their help, he asked her what it was about, hoping she didn't think they'd use her as bait and leave her. 
The girl did not understand how he guessed and replied that she wanted to go alone. It is unwise to go alone to the forest. Moreover, she does not know what can happen. She still needs to collect and bring herbs. He's sure she's not stupid and doesn't think she can handle this all by herself and she's angry. She shouted at him to be quiet. She would go with them. Yoner was surprised and wondered what the guy's family taught him, since he could talk like that. The girl was walking in front of them. Yoner admired her. She really is an experienced hunter. How did the young man find out? She had well-developed calf muscles. And judging by the calluses on her palms, she often shoots arrows, which proves that she has experience in hunting. The girl looked at him and wondered how he could understand it from such small details. He has a strange aura, as if he sees through people. The guy was joking because he just noticed the shadow guard badge on her belt. The guys did not keep up with the hunter, asked her to slow down. Only Yoner can distinguish herbs in the team. If she is not with them, they will not be able to find what they need, the girl reluctantly agreed. And also notice that the girl distinguishes herbs. She is their guide. Then what does the guy do in their team? Even though he knew he really wasn't doing anything, he said he was here to protect them. The girl reasoned that he was well-built, probably from a knight's family. But why was he in the Blue Tower? He replied that from the house of Vardanaz, this is a chance to get closer. The huntress was very scared from such information. Lehan is surprised by her reaction. Is there something wrong with his family? Usually about famous nobles? There are always rumors, but especially strange things are said about Vardanaz, Yoner said. The patriarch of the Vardanaz dragon family. During one crazy incident, he burned all living things to the ground with his breath. A long time ago, the Vardaz clan signed an agreement with the ancient spirits, thanks to which all members of the family are gifted with magic. But the price for this was the loss of feelings. Therefore, the ruthless family, a mage from this family who appeared during the uprising, destroyed an entire city. It's really strange to think of them as monsters that destroy everything. But if something happens, great magics will appear, the young man suggested. That's right, so there's nothing to worry about, the girl replied to him. The huntress hadn't heard about the rumors, but it didn't seem like there was anything to worry about. This guy definitely wasn't insensitive, she thought as she looked at the whining Lee Han. They continued on their way, but at some point the girl noticed footprints. Judging by the not deep tracks, this someone tried to be invisible. I wonder who it could be. No one answered her enthusiastically. It's time to get used to someone outside of her village being interested in such things. But when the guy approached her and became interested, she was shocked. He comes from such a family, and for some reason is interested in wildlife. But she said that you should be careful when you notice this, not only because it has huge footprints, but also because it is difficult to guess who will appear in this place. She had heard that all kinds of monsters lurk inside the academy. This land is filled with mana, so the appearance of many monsters here is inevitable. Of course, there are still a lot of monsters that have emerged during experiments and rare slugs created from discarded magic potions. It's definitely not safe here, the frightened boy thought. They should follow these tracks so they will reduce the risk of being ambushed. The young man asked to teach them to distinguish. It is not easy. He can give up halfway while he is studying. He said that he would do his best if the huntress would help him, and she agreed. After much searching, they finally found Dohawk. Yoner was upset that there were only two things, but she was sure they would find more soon, so she suggested that they move on. Looking at the shocked guys who were standing in a fighting stance and looking somewhere, she asked what happened. Turning around, she saw a huge boar. This is an unusual boar. It feels mana. The huge creature was running towards them. The guy had no other weapons, only how to use magic. He took out his wand. It turned into a huge stick, the size of the magic equipment changing according to the owner's wishes. The huntress admired. Vardanaz is a family of the greatest magicians in the empire. He must have had some training in magic before entering school. If suddenly he can't protect them, he must grab the red-haired girl and run and the huntress will take care of everything. Yoner was touched, because the girl would do such a thing to protect them. In truth, only she is capable of it. Lehan thanked her and said that he was counting on the girl. What magic will the guy use to defeat the monster? When he was still ten years old, he should have known that the sword and king are among all weapons, but handling other equipment is just as important in any situation. Only those who learn this will be able to concentrate their mana in the weapon. This is the aura level. The teacher did not tell the little one that only a few people had reached this level, because if he found out the truth, he would be disappointed. He didn't understand why he was training his aura if he just wanted to become a magician instead of working in an office. 
So he said that training his body and learning how to protect it was pointless for him, he told the teacher. The teacher froze. The boy is definitely different from other nobles who only live in their dreams. It can help him reach the level of using aura. The guy remembered all the training sessions with his teacher and plunged a spear into the mouth of the predator, because of which he died. The girls were shocked. He just hit him. Where's the magic? Einregard's staff is so strong that it can be used in close combat, but it is still impossible to defeat a boar that has become a monster. The only reason this was possible was because Lehan had subconsciously used mana, and even though it was far from the level of mana usage, it was the mana that helped him survive. I'm very tired of the stress. Do lessons have to go like this, and why students are allowed to go to such places? There was a commotion behind them, and they turned around and realized that it was probably another monster. Looking out, they found themselves on a mountain, and below them were the disciples who were being attacked by the second boar. The guy offered to watch because there are quite a lot of them there. They will surely cope. Ashan Dalkard shouted that he would fight this monster himself. His Dalkard family is famous for its exceptional ability to solve problems. If the guy's family for many generations consisted of advisors to the emperor, then their family consisted of premiers and treasurers. Since this guy is a Dalkar, he can be counted on, and apparently he had swordsmanship lessons, Laihan thought. He reads the monster like a book. He can't escape its calculation. Swinging, he hit the monster, but only left a scratch on its body, which made the creature very angry, and in response, it hit the guy so that he flew several tens of meters away. The monster turned towards the two harmless girls at which point the princess stood in front of them to protect them. The boar was rushing at them. She was thinking that everything should be perfect. As always, she would study its breathing during the dash. Suddenly, the boar fell to the ground. It turned out to be a lihan. It was attacking a boar. It was good that it didn't notice them. It was important to approach from the windward side. It was the first time he was counting on Nilia's advice in battle. The princess thanked him for his help and promised to repay the debt. Then he asked her for one favor to tell if there are lessons where he can easily get grades. She probably has connections. How easy it is to earn good grades. The girl was surprised, not understanding what the guy means. Unless a person from such a family does not want to study or he checks it. Someone said that he knows about such subjects and knows better than anyone else. The guy felt an ominous premonition. He was trembling. Suddenly behind him, the professor said that this is alchemy. It looks like he met a master's degree professor from his previous life. He is no longer an inexperienced student. If one is passionate about alchemy, it will be true. The professor knew that the guy would think so, so he said that he could help her fall in love with her. He replied that he would look at other lessons. The students started whispering. As expected from his family, the professor is already running after him. Hearing this made the princess angry, but this is not something that is usually envied. He approached the dead boar and said that the lesson for today will be over. Unfortunately, the other groups were not able to meet these creatures. It turned out that he specifically allowed the monsters to come out on them because he couldn't just send them to collect ingredients. Today's lesson topic was the unforeseen circumstances that they would have to face while they were searching for herbs. The alchemist must cope with any difficulties, fight back, whether it's killing, dodging, escaping, or hiding. The students were angry at the teacher, and Yoner was upset that the professor did not need dohawk grass. After all, they had come all this way for it and found it together. The teacher was surprised. He did not think that they would be able to find her. They are talented students who should attend classes. Especially Lee Han should definitely go to them, the professor said to him as he came closer and put his arm around his shoulder. The guy knew that this was the end. Lee Han accepted the situation. He said that he would try his best. He had always dreamed of studying alchemy. The teacher was surprised because the guy behaved quite mature. He would have rebelled at his age. Since he had killed a boar and found dohawk grass, he would give it a special privilege. He has a cabin near the woods, and he allows you to visit it at any time this semester. Does teacher want him to become a maid? He made it clearer what all newbies want. Of course, food. Of course, they probably don't think about it now. But in a week's time, it will be hard to survive on that food, especially for the children of nobles. His house is full of fresh food. There are even spices and vegetables that he picks himself in the forest. Lehan realized that this was a buffet pass, and he knew that alchemy was beautiful. The teacher released the boar. The students were outraged and said that they would never return to his classes, and someone thought that they would die in the forest altogether. Not to say that the hero was shocked, he was not even surprised. Now the most important thing, the guy grinned, is to stock up on food in the teacher's house. In the clearing in front of the house, they were butchering a dead boar. But for one guy, it's too difficult, he can't do it alone. Yoner ventured to help him. 
She looked pale. The young man was worried. The girl laughed and said that he would share the meat in return. The huntress was shocked. Would they really be butchering him? The nobles have experience in something like this. According to Nilia, she is a real expert, and Yoner is from a family that is familiar with working with ingredients. Together, they will definitely cope. The professor brought them a bag of tools, and they set to work. The huntress was surprised, because the guy was doing even better than she thought, unless they teach this in their family. After removing the skin, they need to cut out the flesh and hang it on wooden beams. They will need the guts for sausages so they should not throw them away, the girl said. They need to prepare blanks. So the guy decided to smoke the meat, because no matter how cold the weather is, it will disappear. In this case, smoking is an excellent way out. The teacher is surprised that the young man has come so far in just three days of training. He could not have imagined that he would be doing this. The guy exceeded all expectations. Lehan asked the teacher for butter and bread and started cooking something. He was thanked for lunch. There was also a gift from the professor, jam, yoner he really liked, well-cooked meat and bread with delicious butter, beautiful nature around, and good friends. Even if these three days were difficult, everyone was able to enjoy communication and get enough of delicious food. They had a lot of meat left and no one knew what to do with it, so the huntress offered to share it with the other students from the tower. The guys agreed that selling meat was a good idea, but the girl didn't suggest it. Most of the students in the Blue Dragon Tower are rich. It won't be a problem for them. They are nobles, so they won't take anything for free. The guy wants to earn a lot of money and live a good life, and the girl wants to save up as much as possible for the sake of the workshop. They are both unusual, but so far Nelia does not know this. She was outraged by the decision of the guys, because they really want to sell meat. She grabbed the package and said that she would just distribute it to her friends just like that. The two men told her that she might regret it, because the friendship ends, but the riches remain. Sitting under the tree, the professor reflected that these three are talented students, but despite this, they are like a peacebreaker. They will become his headache. We find ourselves in the vainglorious Blue Dragon Tower, which is located far from the main territories, and welcomes students with fresh forest air, but today was an exception. The students noticed that the smell was different, and it turned out that Yoner and Lihan were cooking meat. Everyone's eyes lit up, but there was one thing. But to get a piece, they need to pay two silver coins. Although the guys put the price three times higher than everywhere else, they were able to sell a lot. Although where else would the students be able to eat meat? The guy and girl laughed viciously. They were in a winning position. The prince was sitting on the steps, starving to death, and he saw meat in the distance and immediately ran over. The young man greeted his friend and offered him food, thanking him for the food. The prince started to eat, but Lihan immediately stopped him asking him for one silver coin. The prince wondered if he was taking money for food, since the pride of the nobility didn't allow him to feed people for free. But the boy now had no money when the guy took out a loan agreement and asked to leave his signature. At first, the prince clutched the pen in his hands as if in anger, and then burst into tears and said how kind his friend was and how he was friends with such a nice guy. He knew that he had a flair for good people. This is the real friendship for him. That was the end of a good day for everyone. There was a lesson on the basics of magic personality education. None of the nobles understood why they had to learn such a thing. They were perfect. It turned out that their teacher for this lesson will be the director himself. He noticed that the students finally managed to eat. They could find food after a month. One of the students was indignant and tried to object to the headmaster, but he magically silenced him. He is glad that the students have understood. Even though they recruit students every year, the Blue Dragon Tower has always been the slowest and the Black Turtle Tower has always been the fastest, followed by the White Tiger Tower. Compared to the others, the Blue Dragon Tower always takes a long time to get used to the changes, as they have never had to experience hardships. He was impressed that the students had already come to terms with this. The headmaster, of course, knows that Lehan is behind everything. He knew that he was different from the others as soon as he saw him. But how did someone as flexible as him come from such a family? Since the headmaster believes that flexibility and free thinking are the most important qualities for a wizard, he always puts students in difficulties. This lesson even exists because the emperor comes here and forces the headmaster to take responsibility for the actions of people who graduated from the academy. They don't even know how much trouble high school students are going through. This lesson is needed to avoid punishment for their actions. First of all, wizards are quite unpredictable. You should not try to deny this and say that they are different. Such statements make the headmaster even angrier. The teacher asked them to open their textbooks and read the first page. Everyone started saying out loud that they wouldn't use magic so as not to harm ordinary people. 
The headmaster was telling them to say it louder and louder. They were already shouting that they wouldn't use magic so as not to harm ordinary people. This was heard throughout the academy. The director hopes that this lesson will help them become kinder. And he also needs two volunteers to help them. It will only get worse if no one responds. Then Lee Hyun stood up and said that he agreed. I'm sure it will be of some use to him. When asked if he wants to stand out, the guy replied that it would be an honor for him to help a respected teacher. The director hates flattery, but in any case, in the end, opportunities open up only to initiative people. The prince was very scared for his friend, because this crazy director can do anything to him. The guy reassured the boy, because the director sacrifices himself for them. In this case, the prince felt that he should perform for the sake of his friends, he should rise up and volunteer. But a member of the Dalcard family managed to get up in front of him and become a volunteer. His relatives are quite good at handling documents. The guy turned to our hero and said that this is a payment for his past help. Besides, his family has always been good at calculations. The headmaster is happy that the two of them have become friends, but right now there are some things that need to be done, and he wants them to rewrite all the student safety rules for the next lesson. It was getting dark. There was no way he could forgive the headmaster for forcing him to do something so insignificant when he could take care of it using magic. The boy's rage was like fire, and Laihan was worried that he might faint. He thinks he knows why the headmaster asked them to do this, probably thinking something like, Since you're so upset, use magic. They won't be able to conjure even a simple light. So how can they use writing magic? If he had any conscience, he should have left them a clue. The boy got up from his desk and went to the teacher's desk, looking for a ray of hope, something that might help them. But if they did something like that, would they be all right, the boy wondered. Lee Hen doesn't see anything wrong with that, and it's the headmaster's lecture hall, and his friend thinks they can be thieves for once, so they split up and started looking. He saw a glowing box and asked Ashan to come to it. He feels a bit of mana. After opening this box, the director flew out of it. Our hero assumed that it was illusion magic, but the skull said that they opened the box. It means that they finished their stupid work and hoped that they thought of it as soon as possible. And if not, then they are pathetic to madness. There was a piece of paper in the drawer that could be used to learn first-level magic, basic control, and it was best to learn it as quickly as possible. Ashan was indignant that he dared to do this to them, and why he uses such training methods. He thought about writing a complaint against the director and suggested that Lehan do it. But he didn't listen to him. He looked at the paper carefully, then turned to a friend to think that the complaint would not work against this crazy director. 95% that they would not succeed, and these remaining five somehow do not believe, so he suggested to quickly train. On the piece of paper, it was written that the most important thing in the use of magic is will, spells, movements. The basic level spell is move, move, control. They tried to move the feather, but they couldn't and Ashan was running out of mana, so he was very tired. It's really hard to cast magic, and it can look like simple movements from the outside, but when you use it, mana always behaves differently and feels like riding on the same wheel. The hero told himself to focus and imagine that this is his last chance, to remember deadlines the last minutes before the homework is completed. He is like a bamboo forest, light as a feather. He pointed his wand at the object, said, move, and it flew up. Everything worked out, his friend did not understand what kind of family he had such an unusual one. Now the guy just needs to move it slowly, but at the same moment the feather flew out of the window into the street and cut the apple hanging on the tree. They need to solve two problems related to magic. Not only will they need to cast a spell, but they will also need to stay focused in order to move the item. However, if he could cast the spell, it wouldn't be so difficult to control the object, so he tried again. He managed to control the feather, but at that moment the director appeared. He was glad to find out if they had practiced enough. Then the young man stopped controlling the feather and it flew straight at the director. The boys were terribly frightened. Ashan literally began to admire the newcomer's action, and Lehan asked him to be mentally quieter. The pen flew away from the headmaster, and he noticed that they were getting used to it pretty quickly, and he admits that they are good enough for idiots. The hero wondered if that was all the director would say, and he must be in a good mood if that was the case so I decided to ask him for a couple of tips on managing things. He managed to complete the spell. The director replied, Is it really more difficult to control the object? He didn't need to worry. All newbies have difficulties, but he thought it was his magic, and Lihan was reassured by the answer. The director played it. The most difficult part is the spell, and the control itself requires practice. People for whom this is difficult are special, and the young man should find out this is his problem. He bowed to the director and said that he would train more. 
but the skull thought that this child was boring even to mock. He is sure that his friend would have reacted more violently, and his mania for magic grows the more often he uses it, so let him not worry and go to lunch. The headmaster lifted the air of the student and teleported him. The hero was indignant. After all, when you need to use teleportation, the director does not use it. And now he just sent him to the dining room. Alchon was teleported to the clinic due to overexertion. Lunch passed, no one was in the dining room, and the same food was on the table. But it was better than nothing, and he still had some smoked meat left. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the princess appeared, and she brought him the piece of paper that he had asked her for earlier. There were popular lecture topics written on the paper, but these are not subjects for which you can easily get grades. There was also alchemy, which confused the guy, because it is not included in the list of the most popular. He told the princess that there might have been a misunderstanding, because he needed easy subjects to get good grades on. She didn't understand what he meant, so he explained that popular subjects are difficult to get good marks on them due to high competition, and unpopular ones are easy due to a lack of competitors. It turns out that he was really looking for items where you can easily earn high scores, the princess realized. She thought he was the same as all the nobles, but she was wrong. While she was working on that list, she found a couple of items to make a note of and gave him a piece of paper with them on it. There were the basics of swordsmanship. Few would want to learn it in a magic school. The basics of magic battles. Most people are interested in research, so magic battles don't fit their requirements. These are exactly the subjects he wanted. He thanked, and the princess left. The next morning, I was walking down the corridor, and I regret that everyone refused to participate in non-popular lectures, because they did not see the point in it. When it comes to schools and teachers, understanding is out of the question. Everyone doesn't know that you go to other lectures, but they don't care. So to focus on the really important classes, I need those that I don't have to worry about. It's a compromise. The lecture hall for classes on magic battles was in the basement. Although the stairs looked normal, there was clearly something wrong with this place. Everyone who lives in the empire knows this. Believe me, do not recklessly visit the magic tower. Even if it looks ordinary from the outside, once you get into it, you may not get out of it. The little hero also read the book with his teacher, but it seems that they exaggerate a lot. You can never get out of this tower. He will die there sooner than get out. Einrogard can be considered the worst version of the magic tower, so despite the curiosity of newcomers, do not seek to explore the academy. Lihan decided to go down to the basement. This is only a school, after all. The dorm on the first floor of the main building was fine. The director appeared behind him and asked if he was going to the first floor of the dungeon. The guy was very scared because of his unexpected appearance, but this is a chance for him. He replied that it was a great honor for him to see the honorable director. He really tried to get there, but now he was wondering if the lich would have something to tell about this place, but he had nothing to say to the guy. If his corpse is found tomorrow, then he will put a flower on the grave. The hero smiled and mentally thought that he was a complete bastard. How can anyone smile while full of resentment and hatred? That's what a graduate is. There were torches on the walls. Apparently, the director tried to scare the young man. This place looks ordinary, but why does the sign on the ceiling look so intimidating? Nearby, he saw other students. It's great. He won't be alone. But then the guys realized that this was a practice of basic magic equipment and they came to the wrong place, almost getting into trouble. They need to leave quickly. Someone will even go to such classes. They are doubtful. The girl says that even the guys from behind her tower came back scared. When he entered the lecture hall, he saw three more students. Apparently, they were not there by choice. There was a blue ball on each table, and the teacher was sitting on a chair behind him, but he didn't notice it at first, so he was afraid when the teacher asked him to sit down to start the lesson. The teacher had pale skin, sullen eyes, and long fangs, apparently a vampire. He introduced himself as Bloodgreg. The item on their tables is made from Spirit Star Stone. It's a mana-sensitive ore. When the constellations take their places, they begin to exude holy energy and the stones of the spiritual star change under the influence of this power. He asked the class to fill the balls with his mana. Our hero could not even use the light spell from the basics of mana. Yet, will he be able to do it? The ball flew up in the air from him and the other students. He couldn't believe that it was so easy. Maybe it wasn't just a simple spirit star stone, but an artifact. Noticing the markings on the ball, he is sure that the teacher made them himself. Lihan has heard that well-made artifacts can be sold at a high price. One of the students' balloon flew into the ceiling. She was very scared because it could break through the ceiling. The ball depends on their will. It can be controlled. The teacher has cast a spell on it so it won't destroy the lecture hall. The girl calmed down. It was a relief. At the same moment, 
The ball hit her on the head. The girl fell. This spell does not apply to students. The teacher sympathized and said that they should try not to break the ball. Maybe he meant, be careful not to kill themselves, the girl thought. He asked them to try again to raise his air and draw a circle. Even if it is an artifact, it is still difficult to control. It does not move at the will of the young man. One of the students managed to draw a circle, but the teacher asked him to repeat this trick. They will be able to stop drawing circles when they can do it perfectly. Others were unhappy with such tasks and tried to take time off from the toilet to escape from the class. The girl who almost hit the ceiling with a ball also wanted to leave the lesson and pretended to faint. Our hero appreciated this improvisation. As he approached the girl, he realized that she was not joking at all. She had spent all her mana and felt bad. The teacher didn't react in any way, just said that when she got well enough to continue drawing circles, the guy didn't appreciate this reaction. Apparently, he was left here alone. Lehan decided to ask how the teacher gives points. It turns out that regardless of the number of people present, he leaves points according to the rating. These were ideal classes for a young man. He will definitely get a top grade if he just attends the lecture. He has finally found what he was looking for, even such simple tasks that he adores. He was the only one left in the class which impressed the teacher. Every year, new students arrive like a tide, but they always leave after the first lecture and never come back. Last year, there wasn't a single student left, but he didn't care, because under the contract, he is required to conduct classes every year. There is nothing about attendance. He always stayed alone in an empty lecture hall, hoping that time will pass quickly and no one will disturb him. But today, one of the freshmen stayed in the hall, destroying all his expectations. Judging from his manners, the young man comes from a noble family. He doesn't quite understand what kind of magic he has, but it's not hard to guess that the boy is special. He wanted him to continue attending his classes. In that case, he thinks that he can finally move on to the next topic. In the recreation hall, he discussed electives with his friends and said that they could enroll there to get good attendance points, saying that they give them a crystal ball that is filled with magic and they practice drawing circles with it. That's all. This, of course, did not impress the guys, but he still said that they are guaranteed to get good grades. Yoner was outraged by Laihan's suggestion. He is just something. It is not for her to evaluate it, but he is just obsessed with it. Since they didn't want to, he didn't beg them. He had to go to the next basic swordsmanship class, and they were even more surprised that he was doing this at magic school. Classes were held in the courtyard at the south entrance of the main building, but there were more people than he expected. All the students were from the White Tiger Tower. Most of the students from this tower are children from knight families, hence they are good at swordsmanship and take it seriously. Although the basic magic battle classes were easy, it shouldn't be difficult here either, since he had also trained as a child. The students around him whispered that he was from the Blue Dragon Tower and came from a family in Vardanaz. It was also said that he only came here because he had a little practice with a babysitter as a child, because he underestimates swordsmanship too much. He had heard that they were very proud of their skills, but this attitude exceeded all his expectations. He didn't care about their opinion. They were just teenagers anyway. Someone approached from behind. It was a man with green skin, an orc. He said that the guy had gone to the wrong place because he was going to Vardanaz and the Blue Dragon Towers, and this is a place for experienced swordsmen, not for beginners. He thanked him for the clarification, thus angering the orc, who repeated that this is a place where not just swinging a sword like nobles usually do, he can get hurt in a duel. No one will give in to him. He waved it off and said that he would try not to hurt him if they fought, and the orc was very angry. The teacher coughed to draw attention and introduced himself as Professor Ingledell. This semester he would be teaching basic swordsmanship classes. The professor was an elf. He is sure that they all own a sword and came here to improve their skills or not lose their existing ones, so they will immediately start the lesson. The hero is here to get good grades, so he will work out his existing skills. Someone tapped him on the shoulder, and behind Li Han was an elf boy, fair-haired and blue-eyed, who must be popular with girls, he thought. He wondered why he chose swordsmanship if he belonged to a famous family known for their magical abilities. This was obvious. He replied that few people choose this elective, so here he can get good grades. The elf did not answer. He decided to immediately admit that it was for the sake of grades, in order to avoid misunderstandings in the future. He understood the guy's motives and introduced himself as Marathi of the Marathi family. Although he looks like a sissy, his hands are already covered in calluses. It was nice to meet him. House Marathi adheres to strict rules and preserves the northern lands in harsh conditions, as well as using any methods to achieve its goals. He thought so but the guy was completely different from them. Rumors are not always true. It is worth making friends with this boy. Bluestone swordsmanship is a technique that Alrarlong taught me, 
and the name implies that it is effective and easy to use. The nobles are reluctant to take it on because of the hard training, but he endured everything. He just didn't have a choice. The teacher praised him for his ability to use the blue ball technique, as it was a good base, and asked him what house he was from. When he heard the answer, he was shocked, because he was well-versed in the basics of being of this kind and asked why he was trained in swordsmanship. In response, he heard that this is a necessary skill for any noble. The professor's face changed, although he agreed. It was a trademark expression of all the professors. He can say goodbye to good grades if he says something wrong. So I went on to say that I used to think so. But as I went deeper into my art studies, I realized that I just couldn't not come here. He liked the boy's response and attitude, and he takes swordsmanship seriously, unlike the White Tiger Tower students. Thanks to the young man, he realized something that Mercy was not worth waiting for, and asked him to get a sword. This was not part of the guy's plans. Why did everything turn out like this? They started training. After a while, the young man was exhausted. The professor said that his technique is like a boulder and he will not falter at anything. This is the art of bluestone. Do not forget this. Picking up the guy from the ground, finished the training and asked who will be next. The hero's whole body ached. He took a lot of blows, and the teacher took advantage of his problems in defense and just beat him. With such jokes are bad. All the students from the White Tiger Tower are future knights, and the professor laid them down so easily, if all were long is like an unshakable rock. Then Ingerdell resembles a stream of water and this despite the fact that he has prosthetics instead of an arm and leg. Moreover, he uses the thundercloud technique in which you need to move more. The essence of double blades is in their complexity and coherence. You need to think through your movements better. The art of moon peak is fast and sharp. It uses the whole body to strike. It's amazing that the teacher recognizes the student's techniques and gives them personalized advice. Whether it's true or not, he still feels like he's been beaten harder than the others. The class was coming to an end, the teacher called Lee Hun to his place, and also invited a friend from Choi's house. It was the same orc that the guy almost got into a fight with. The professor announced that they would fight a duel, which amazed everyone around them, why they were chosen, whether the fight would be fair. The orc chuckled and immediately agreed. The young man didn't really react to such a reaction, but now he won't be able to back down. He might have been having a fun time, but instead, he was training just for those moments. The reason why the professor chose the two of them is quite simple. They stand out among the students. With the help of theory, fencing cannot be mastered. It takes 1,000 hours of practice, and to achieve at least some result, you must have experience gained from real battles. For example, if you take a technique that hits an opponent in the neck using only one of them, it will be difficult to win. But if theory starts working together with practice, the swordsman will be able to unleash true power. He and the orc have learned their lessons and are able to control their mana, even though they don't fully control it yet, which means they're the only ones who can call themselves skilled knights. The guys stood up in their positions. The professor thought that the guy still managed to masterfully use a sword, although he was not a scion of a knight's house. Surely in the family circle they throw sidelong glances at him. It's still amazing how much perseverance he has. The teacher is proud, and therefore will help him become better and improve his fencing skills. The duel has begun. It will be an interesting duel. Durugu uses the Choi Bloodline technique, Moon Mountain Blade, fast and sharp. Lihan confronts him with a cliff edge, a strong technique with heavy punches. Students are complete opposites, so they can learn a lot from each other, but this requires training matches. Org did not want to wait and stepped into the fight first. He swung his sword, but almost reached and wounded the young man. The hero's foot got stuck in the sand when he pulled it out. The sand flew into the air and hit the enemy's eyes. All the students were very surprised that he threw sand at the enemy, and, is this allowed? The girl went to the professor to find out about it. But he did not pay attention. He was amazed at the agility of the young man. He said that they can fight by any means in battle, whether there is life and death. And Lehan understands this very well, and it is hard for others to accept this. They were born into families where honor is respected. They had no reason to learn such things. Lon is focused on winning. He doesn't care what happens around him. He is a real swordsman. Swinging, the guy hit the orc with a rather childish blow. It seems that the orc underestimated his capabilities, that he is not from the knight family. The young man saw that the opponent was outstanding. He needed to finish him off. When he saw his past movements, he realized that the guy was very smart. He needed to turn the tide of the battle in his favor. He stepped on the foot of his opponent, who fell to the ground in frustration and rolled away, but did not even roll further. The professor was also shocked by the actions when the orc stood up. 
He didn't want to forgive this guy because it was very humiliating and swung his sword. But the orc repelled the attack. The teacher knows that they are quite skilled, but he can't believe that Darugu is so skilled with the moon mountain blade. But he quickly runs out of steam. How much force is distributed incorrectly for each movement? The guy remains calm and defends himself. Lihan was too hot. It was a strange aura. The young man told himself in his head that he should remain calm, gather himself together to increase the chances of winning. After that action of the orc, he cannot make the right decision, because of which he made a lot of unnecessary movements. In addition, judging by the mana on the ball, the orc's stamina is already at its limit, but Lihan does not get tired when using mana. This duel is only a matter of time. Darugu was outraged that the guy was beating him. He probably didn't put enough strength into the sword, but why didn't the boy get tired and fight with such a face? It was as if he was looking for a needle in a stone. The orc seemed to be in his palm. They continued to fight, and at one point, Lihan ended the battle with one of his punches. The winner was determined, the professor said, and asked them to step up. If Darugu had been balanced, he would have shown a different result. As a result, he himself was pointing sticks in the wheels. He is young, it is quite expected that he could not cope with emotions. And Lihan already seems to belong to the aristocracy. Today, these two showed them an excellent duel. But winning is not the main thing. The winner should be more modest, and the loser should be motivated by defeat. So the two sides move forward. He asked them to shake hands. Considering the mood of the orc, he did not plan to give up at all. Well, when the orc apologized for his rudeness and thanked him for the fight, the guy was very surprised. It doesn't look like he's going to lower his guard to hit him, but he probably said it because he was too worried. The teacher asked the other students why they didn't clap and clapped his hands himself. At night, when the guys, students from the White Tiger Tower gathered, announced that Org was defeated, and whether he thought he would leave everything as it is, he replied that he lost because he was weak. The guys tried to calm down that it was all because of the sand in his eyes, and that it was not his fault at all. But he continued, and he said he was weak. But that's not what matters now, the elf boy said. But the pride and honor of their tower, it was ruined because of him, and the Choi family must take responsibility. He asked the Marathi family and the Knight families how he could pay for this, but if he lost because he was alone, then the three of them go together. Two guys put their hands on his shoulders and led him somewhere. In fact, the crowd thought that he was going too far, but only losers do this. But the org itself is against and will take revenge. They went to fight them. One more guy joined them. Even with the skills of Vardanaza, it is impossible to defeat three people alone, especially since they are from knightly families and train hard. He can just give up. But knightly pride will not allow it. No matter what happens, he is on the side of Vardanaza. Lihan was standing at that place. He was controlling the flying stones. If they were still not convinced that it was dangerous, then the guys could come closer. No one understood what was going on here. The knights caught him a few moments ago, and they'll try to make sure he doesn't show up in class again. They seem to be doing it because of that duel, but they just need to be intimidated. And he turned around and told you not to forget what family he was from. Judging by their reactions, they thought about what to do. Only cowards hide behind their family and some of them probably have someone behind it. Shouldn't they have thought and then done it? If only half of these students had brains, they wouldn't be doing this. The hero asked, who put them up to it? Was it some great house that can't be denied? They shouted at him to shut up and attack. Arlar Long, as you said, if something like this happens, then you need to run away. But the escape route is blocked, and how can he get out? On the ground, he saw rocks and tried to change his tactics a bit. He doesn't think it will be any harder with rocks than with the feathers he lifted into the air in class. When they saw the flying stones, they were very afraid of how he could learn magic in such a short time. This was already enough to scare you. Now you need to quickly sort it out and leave. One stone flew off and hit the opponent right in the head. He fell to the ground. It seems that the guy slightly overdid it. Practice is really necessary. The guy on the backup told the main orc that the guy throws stones too fast. They didn't even have time to do anything. He was angry. Because even if he is from a house where he knows strong magic. This, of course, is not what our hero wanted but we will have to put up with it. Now they can approach if they want to die. They rushed away. The orc he was fighting didn't plan to fight him at all, so they sat down, lit a fire, and began to talk about what and who needs from Lehan. It turned out that the White Tiger Tower is very different from the Blue Dragon Tower. Their families are powerful, so it looks like some kind of gathering of rich show-offs. And in the White Tiger Tower, the campaign has already established its own hierarchy. He began to draw a guy in the sand, it was the same cute elf that the guy first appreciated well, because you can't tell from the look of it. Appearance and personality are not the same thing. 
it seems that the rumors about popular guys are quite true. Well, if he called him Giselle, maybe it's not a guy, but a girl. But why did he send you guys to Lahana? But there was no point in arranging all this for some duel. The duel was just an excuse, a reason, much more. Firstly, he is from the house of Vardanas. If that elf defeats someone from a well-known family, his authority among the first-year students will greatly increase. Apparently, he regards the guy as a trophy that can make a name. This is not very pleasant. But the orc is only concerned that if he continues to show his best side, the students from his tower will start to get jealous and start a rancor. Giselle knows how to use these students. If he wants to continue going to fencing, then he should be more careful. Try to avoid classes that students from the White Tiger Tower attend. Otherwise, the elf will not be able to get close to him. The advice is certainly not bad, but the young man will not follow it. Firstly, it is difficult to find normal electives by Lehun standards like this. And secondly, how dare he play? It is only pride. A beat-up Lihan came to the recreation hall and said that he was attacked by students from the White Tiger Tower, just because he is a student of the Blue Dragon Tower. The disciples of this tower were very indignant. You can't just leave it and sit there. Okay, if it was a prince, but they dared to touch him. Vardanaza. The prince from the second floor did not understand what he had to do with it and how it happened in general. The students were more angry than the young man expected. He tried to calm down. There is no need to go there. But they all owe him, because each of them ate the meat that the guy brought. If not for him, they would have starved to death. But Lihan knew he was just trying to provoke them, so they formed up. And the commander-in-chief held up his hands and said they were going to go kill those people from the White Tower. The guy didn't calculate it a bit. He didn't think that the Blue Tower could hate the White One so much. It's natural to dislike those who don't look like you. When the guys were already running, sit them down. Someone stopped them and said that before going, they should listen to him. He said that they shouldn't be in such a hurry, because this tower comes from the families of knights. If they go, then they will break their heads there, and they will lose. The young man said that Ashan was really very rational, but Ashan shouted back that they would ambush them, provoking everyone even more. Our hero thought what a fool he was to expect something different. He asked everyone to stop and said that he never wanted to take revenge on anyone. This is his own business, so he will deal with his problem himself. But the guys said that they are very cunning, mean, petty, so it will not be easy to deal with these dirty guys. Lehan then explained that they were the children of noble families, and if they were not ashamed to be like them, everyone thought about it. If the tigers want to fight, they will respond to them altogether, because then they will probably attack in a crowd, like cowards. The guys supported his idea. They will prepare and stay together. This is how the hero can avoid being bullied. Everyone dispersed. The next lecture was just with these students. The guys were lucky. Now they will be able to put them in their place, because they have already mastered the magic of light and are sure that no one has achieved this yet. The hero stopped with an astonished face, apparently the only one who hadn't learned light magic yet. The next morning, Yoner left the room. Lehan's exhausted look startled her. It turned out that he was not sleeping, but practicing magic. He had long received permission. The others say that they have already fully mastered the magic of light. The prince came down from the stairs so early, he behaved very suspiciously. It turned out that he went to fry sausages on the fire for himself. Lehan came up from behind and scared the prince very much, but said that they were not going to take him away, and that he should relax. Everyone around them looked tired, exhausted, and also insanely hungry. They are holding on thanks to the fact that he sold them food, otherwise everything would have been much worse. Something had to be done. The alchemy professor is too greedy. Even if they try to take some food from his hut, it's unlikely that anything will come of it. They needed to find some other loophole. They came to the lecture hall to see a half-troll teaching the basics of magic, on extremely observant towards the students, so immediately sensed the changes that had happened to them. Firstly, a week after entering the academy, the students were very hungry, and secondly, she could feel the tension between the students of the towers how much these people from different backgrounds were competing fiercely. And the competition between the White Tiger Tower and the Blue Dragon Tower was especially fierce. But thanks to the competition, they would only become stronger. This is one of the director's beliefs. However, she doesn't agree with this. It would be better if everyone could get along. She asked to move the class. They had last studied light magic. Had anyone mastered it? She asked. The young man replied that it was difficult to do this, having spent all last night training. Although he was exhausted, but he couldn't stop, as expected from a guy from such a family. But it turned out that others did not master the skills completely, but only got the hang of it. The guy worked so hard, but all in vain, because he fell for the tailless and noble guys. In total, 
two of the entire academy has fully mastered the skill, and both of them are from the Blue Dragon Tower. The second one was the princess. This is another opportunity for the young man to get to know her better, but she believes in that strange rumor about him. The rumor that he only needs good grades, not knowledge, but this is incomprehensible to the mind. The guy looked at his classmate, but it was true, said to himself, and he had nothing to say. Ashan was furious. He was disappointed with her imperial majesty. It was all the fault of the one who started the rumors, but how could anyone buy it? The guy didn't mind her believing what she wanted. His friend now admired his generosity. The tower is full of noble scions. No one is standing next to him. He is sure that he was sent to such a place to meet people like Lehen. The boy burst into tears and said that the guy is just incredible. Princess and our hero went to the middle of the class, show their skills. Students rarely cope with such spells in the first week. The teacher clapped her hands. She is glad that she teaches such talented students. And the rest should not be discouraged, because insight, the most basic spell, it will help them get the first idea of magic, so don't let them worry. The young man was not sure that no one was listening to her, given the way they behave. This is simply impossible. She asked everyone to calm down and return to their seats. The students discussed their progress, and the teacher asked them not to be upset, because they would be studying element magic for the entire semester, so they were happy. When they master the light spell, they will intuitively understand how to use it. Element magic includes water, fire, earth, and air, and two more complex elements, darkness and gravity. This magic is based on other types of magic. For example, summoning spirits or enchanting artifacts is like moving from basic arithmetic operations to high school level math. Moreover, learning the basic elements will be treated with respect everywhere. Now they will pass the test for the basic element, how much each one is suitable for only one. There is no point in mastering all the elements, the students discussed. Someone wanted to learn only one magic, but a certain predisposition was needed. Now they were doing the same thing as in the last lesson, only instead of light, there was to be a fire. She asked them to be careful, because they might get burned. The prince was very scared, because he could catch fire like a match. To use magic, one had to say flame loudly. He didn't want to react so violently, but honestly, magic is an amazing thing. So they started practicing with fire. Candles were placed on the students' wedged desks, making it easier to recreate the image of the flame. When Luhan wanted to try it, the teacher stopped him and told him that he should refrain from using fire magic because it was dangerous. Come to think of it, the last time he was hurt was because of the blinding light. And if he can't control the light, then after losing control of the fire, he doesn't even want to imagine what might happen. He will try to practice when he is confident in his abilities, while the teacher suggested that he practice with magic water, because it is not so dangerous, and it is also a basic element. The student, of course, was not happy, because the magic of flame and lightning is useful in attack metal and earth in defense, while water is quite ambiguous. Among the advantages, he can quench his thirst at any time, which is to do everything for the sake of the safety of others. Ashan said that he envies the guy because he will have private lessons with the professor, who got angry and told him to be quiet. The hero was sitting over a bowl of water and trying to learn how to control it so that he could finally learn fire magic. He swiped it away with his wand, and it all worked out on the third attempt, which surprised the other students. The teacher praised him for his good work and said that he had a penchant for water magic. She announced to the whole class that he was able to handle elemental magic, which was expected of a student from such a family. And don't worry if they haven't succeeded yet. Everyone has an element to which they are predisposed. Those who grew up in the forge are trained as fire mages, and those who grew up near the sea or river are predisposed to the element of water. Those who grew up in a windy area will get along with the air. The more unfamiliar you are with an element, the easier it will be to call it. It's strange because our hero is not familiar and has nothing to do with water, only remembers how his teacher drowned him at work when he was a senior from high school. The princess stared at him like she was burning through him, and when he looked back, she turned away. He was thinking about her gaze, so the water fell directly on his head. The teacher laughed. Spells are easily dispelled due to loss of concentration. Next time he should try to hold his form. Professor Kim, she is a light in this school, the guy thought, and asked how he should hold this form. It's usually held until all the mana runs out, but that's never going to happen to you, she figured, so he should hold it until the end of the lesson. The guy was scared. Apparently, it was some kind of punishment the professor left. He almost forgot that Professor Kim works at this crazy academy, where everyone is a little crazy, and she is a teacher. Holding the spell for a long time is psychologically very difficult, like balancing on a tightrope. But she understood that this lesson was necessary for Lehan, 
The fact that he was able to create such a large ball on the third attempt means that his talent is not just predisposition. Moreover, the amount of Lehan's mana is comparable to the reserve of billion greatest magicians, so you need to polish this diamond. She is sure that the boy will cope, but he thought that all the professors are very evil, and every day they were mistaken more and more. Sometime later, in the alchemy class, when the guy said that the princess went too far and succeeded in creating fire, the teacher ignored him. Yoner was happy when she found out that she was close to the wind element. The prince even burned his wand, but our hero spent the entire lecture staring at the water, and it really flooded him. The alchemy professor said that this is a sign that Professor Kim likes it, and he is sure that this is why she gave him these tasks. He laughed and said that this was why he was suffering in the professor's garden on the long-awaited Friday, and the professor replied that he complained too much, because he had volunteered to do it. Earlier, he had come to the professor to help with the cabin chores, asked him for food in return, and the professor agreed and said that he could share it with him. After finishing work and eating, he said that he would take some more with him. Let the teacher count this bonus for initiative. He did not approve of such an act of the guy. You cannot relax for a second with him. Lehan wasn't an ordinary student at all, like how he was able to come out of the Vardana's family. He asked him about what was going on, for example, about the quarrel with the students from the White Tiger Tower. To be honest, the relationship between the two towers, of course, is not very good. Well, it was the same last year, apparently. This is the norm here. He knows they don't like each other. But fighting at the academy is too much, and they're already busy learning magic. The professor approved of this opinion. At least he thinks with his head. But if they want to fight, just ignore them and practice magic better instead. The guy looked at him in silence and replied that this was the right thing to do, even if they had already fought, which surprised the teacher. He asked me to stop looking at him like that because he didn't want to. It's strange that there aren't usually any skirmishes in the first week, the dwarf thought. What's the big deal? It turns out that the guy just signed up for fencing. Isn't that cruel of them? The teacher choked and very furiously asked if he was really trespassing on their territory by signing up. But he can take any electives. Since it's happened, there's nothing you can do about it, as long as the boy's okay. The professor is not. I'm sure about magic, but those students are good at fighting. The boy said that it was really hard to fight three at once, and the teacher choked again. He said he would go make them something to eat. That was enough for today. He should be nice to him. He might come after him one day after becoming the best swordsman in the empire, he thought. When he was satisfied with the delicious food, he asked how the dwarf used to manage everything on his own. He said that they had also helped him before, but they were lazy and incompetent, so they ran away, although this is a basic skill for an alchemist. Things like dusting your hut or watering your fields turned out to be basic for an alchemist. After graduate school, he had thought of it as a normal routine, but it wasn't right. There was a bit of free land left in the field, so he asked the professor to plant something there. He happily agreed. He is thinking of planting cabbage or leeks. It was not a bad decision. Well, he does not think to sell them later. The guy wondered how he knew, unless someone was trying to pull this off. Not at all. The guy was the first scoundrel. Although this angered the teacher, who told him to do whatever he wanted. It was a strange reaction that surprised the hero. Raw vegetables, of course, do not want to eat from them. You need to cook something. He asked the professor if he knows any dishes from cabbage or leeks. It was Cheej. On the territory of the empire, food cultures vary depending on the location. The Vardanaz family's property is located in the west, where western-style dishes with bread and cheese are served. Rice, noodles, kochujan, and tuenjan are prepared in the east. This cuisine is close in taste preference to Korean. The teacher likes jjigae, but tries not to cook it, because it is oriental cuisine, and he hates the dwarves from the east. His distant relatives live there, and he has no idea how much they bully him when they meet. They ask why he doesn't sell recovery potions, because they are quite expensive, why he doesn't have any money, and why he doesn't visit them. The hero had heard that Easterners were harsh, but he didn't know how much. He asked if the guy would be busy on the weekend, immediately thought that he would have to work, but the guy denied it because he doesn't look like a tyrant. The guy was happy when he found out that he didn't have classes on weekends. The teacher said, If he doesn't have time to come, then let him think about what will happen to the hungry students in a couple of days. They will certainly not burn down the academy, but the cornered students will look for a way to eat and survive. Students from the Black Turtle Tower will pick fruits and berries. White tigers will hunt. And what about blue dragons? They are equally talented students, and eventually they will also find a way to get food. Obviously, this year will be different from the previous ones. Then the young man asked what the Phoenix Tower would do, but this does not apply to them. They will not be starved. 
priests live in the tower who constantly practice asceticism. So if there is no food, they will continue to pray. The devotion to the faith of these guys is amazing, and Lehan will go hunting with friends on the weekend if he gets into a fight again. This time they will take them in numbers. It looks like they won't be able to avoid them, but in any case, they are unlikely to collide. This is only possible if they choose another path, the path of escape. The Magic Academy campus is a fortress surrounded by enchanted walls, and yet every year students try to escape. If you think about it outside the fortress, you can find a lot of things, not surprisingly. Some try to pull it off. New clothes and shoes, bread and butter, cheese and jam, a whole bunch of basic necessities, so many reasons to run away. The teacher was confused by the guy's face. He said that tigers always try to get out first because they are simpletons. Did someone succeed? The hero asked. Everything went wrong. Now he will not listen to the teacher, he thought, and said that he can forget. If he wants, then let him try. Youth is the time to go through adversity. But the young man with burning eyes said that he would never do such a thing. The dwarf asked him to repeat it again, but only with a serious face. In one of the rooms, an orc and three other people were gathering. People offered to cooperate with him if he wanted to return in one piece. He replied that it was not necessary to go too far, and he noticed Lehan from under the hood. This outfit was completely ineffective. The prince was surprised that they were familiar, because he said that you need to intimidate him. But Durugu cannot take seriously when he is threatened by someone who looks like a squirrel. The prince was very angry because he called him that. The hero asked him to calm down and opened the curtains. Yonar asked why they should go so far. The answer was that the guy is afraid that the tigers will misunderstand if the orc is friendly with them. And there he is already recognized as an outcast, and all for the sake of Lehan. They will do everything for the sake of someone who will become his mole in the future, the orc thought, in the sense of a mole. This is quite a shameful title. The boy reminded him that he had promised to report back to him if the elf thought anything was wrong. Darugu asked me to choose more noble words for this. The prince thought, isn't the mole perfect? But when he saw the evil expression on the orc's face, he quickly changed his mind. It's all because of honor and justice, so the mole is not suitable. He quickly changed his mind. The hero suggested that he would be an informant from now on. This is the role of a loner facing injustice. It sounded pretty good. And he agreed to be an informant. Now they are looking forward to working together. Yonar still didn't understand what he'd learned at home, to be able to negotiate like this and hypnotize people. Moving on to the main point, they gathered here early on a weekend morning to figure out how to escape from the academy. The students were all in favor, and the orc was wondering if Lehan was serious. The guy knew that something would be against it, so he has ten ways to persuade him. Darugu's expression was very surprised. He was shocked. He couldn't believe that he was also thinking of running away. Even if they are from night families, nobles are nobles. The students from Tiger Tower have never been hungry, so their hunger was even more excruciating. It couldn't go on like this anymore. They wanted to hunt. After all, the guys from the Blue Dragon Tower could. Then the knights can. They will break the noses of those who only show off with magic. The elf asked them to calm down. Hunting is a reasonable decision, but it is worth thinking again. Will it be so easy, the one that Vardanaz caught? That boar, he was released specially by the professor. If they want to catch something like this, they need to go deep into the forest. They don't agree to such a thing, so there is only one way to escape from the academy. The elf will make sure that they do not even think about the meat of those animals. He had already planned everything and would be happy if they joined him, as expected of Moradi. But they must follow his orders. If the plan goes wrong because of disobedience, he will never forgive them. After the conversation, everyone went to bed, and Durugu was listening behind the wall. The hero's eyes lit up again wondering if he would be allowed to join if he obediently obeyed all orders. The orc couldn't understand Lehan's thoughts after all that Giselle had done to him. Who cares, the young man said. As it turned out, all his friends did. Things got a lot more complicated initially he planned to escape. But judging by what professors are here, it will not be easy. But Marathi said that he has plans. He is not as simple as the prince. Giselle is smart and cold-blooded enough to use the students from his tower. There's some reason why he's acting cocky. They have no other choice now. They will follow them and find out what their plan is. Durugu was shocked and furious. He thinks it's a very shameful idea, but there is a saying that says, know your enemy as you know yourself. The guy tapped his friend on the shoulder and said it was his strategy. Orc wasn't sure why, but it sounded convincing, and now he thinks it might work. Having resolved all the differences, the young man asked his friend to follow Marathi. 
and as soon as he found out something about his plan, he would come with news, and let him remember that Durugu is not only a great warrior, but also an excellent informant. He kicked the orc out the door, and said that the mission was starting now, and would he be able to handle it? The friend replied that of course he can handle it, the guy can rely on him. As he slammed the door shut, he was glad that he had been dealt with so far, and now he needed to come up with a backup escape plan. The guys were getting closer and closer, which scared the young man. They asked if he had studied brainwashing magic before entering, and he answered by asking how they imagined it. At sunset, they all met again, and the huntress was also there, Lahane greeting and thanking them for attending the first escape meeting. Neely was freaked out by the announcement. He didn't say he wanted to run away from the academy. She thought they were just going hunting or something. He calmed her down and said he had plans. He doubts that Vardanaz would have acted without a plan, of course. He is not like the whole family, but he has a plan. The girl decided to find out what the plans are. What is his goal? The guy told about the student from the White Tiger Tower. He knows how to escape, so they should follow him and find out his plan. When the huntress was about to leave, Yoner winked at the young man and said that this plan would be impossible without Nilly. The guy supported her and said that without the girl, they definitely could not cope. After all, their strategy is based on surveillance skills and hunting instincts, and she has both. They can't force her if she hates so much. Nelia agreed, because she is the only one capable and she has no choice, the girl said proudly. Tonight, like-minded people from the White Tiger Tower are gathered here. The knights who swore to follow Marathi's orders will run away from the academy. The people supported him. He took out the map with it. Failure was simply impossible. Back in her house, a month before entering, the elf read books about the Academy of Magic and much more. But it wasn't the same. She ordered something better to be brought. There was no benefit from the employees. They excused themselves and went to look for something else. Among the remaining books, she found a piece of paper. It was a map of the escape from Einrograd. Previously, the girl thought that it was only four, but it's good that she took it. Now she is here and understands what this card is for. The team went to the forest, and behind it investigated the guys undercover. The prince did not understand at all what was going on, then the young man asked the orc to take care of him. He said that he could rely on him. The huntress's ability to navigate the mountains is amazing, and the guy and Darugu are very hardy. Yoner is used to hiking in the mountains for herbs, but the prince is not quite. A little later, he was dying of thirst, as he was not used to it, being carried on the back of an orc. As expected, it wasn't easy to keep an eye on the untrodden paths. If it wasn't for Nilia, they wouldn't be able to keep up with the knights, but it couldn't be helped. He still had the habit of marking things in graduate school, and at that moment, the huntress shouted for them to stop. The tigers were acting strange. They suddenly stopped for some reason. The prince assumed that they had reached their destination, which was easier than he thought. Lehan doubted that they had already arrived. It couldn't be that simple. Suddenly he got nervous, looked up at the sky, and felt a strange feeling. It wasn't a monster. They're definitely not here. It looked like it was happening. The guy was dripping cold sweat. He couldn't believe it. The principal was in the sky, laughing at the students. Because they bought it again in the first week, everyone was very scared. Pointing a finger at the elf, he said that you had fallen for his trick. He didn't understand what was happening, because the map had become hers before arriving at the academy, but it had evaporated in her hands now. Today, they learned an important lesson. You can't trust cards whose origin is unknown to them, because they don't know if it's a treasure map or a trap that the evil lich has prepared. Marathi fell to the ground. Lehan watched from the bushes and thought how crazy the headmaster was. What a lesson. He was just mocking them. The director asked them to listen carefully. Now it's time for them to go back, and the rules are simple. They go back without being caught by the followers. Blowing a lot of evil skeletons dressed as samurai with sabers appeared. Students can use any methods. They can even fight them. If they are caught, they will be punished. But if they manage to escape, they will not. The students ran away from the monsters. The huntress grabbed the guy's hand and started to run. But he stopped and calmed her down. It seems that the monsters did not notice them. And even if they caught them, the worst thing that could happen was that they would be locked in a room and flogged. She was even more frightened, probably because he was talking about those rooms with torture instruments that you can't escape from. She has a good imagination. The guy from behind the tree began to spy on what was happening, and Yoner tried to calm down the nervous girl. There was only one question left. How to get away without being noticed. The knights decided not to run. The monsters will chase them anyway. It would be better to kill the evil spirits. They lined up. An orc came up behind Lehan and said that he thought the only way they could get out of here was to put aside their feud and work together with the knights. The young man approved the idea and they would team up and run away while they bought time. 
The guys were ready to act, only Darugu was left shocked by how the guy changed his plan. The hero repeated the plan and noticed that there were no gaps in the team. It turned out that the director was still summoning monsters. When the headmaster said that those who escape will not be punished, he thought it was some kind of test. But it seems that he is not going to let anyone go. It was easier to give up if you looked at how many students had already been caught, but for some reason the pursuers did not even look in the direction of the guy. He was very surprised. It seems that the director does not know that they are here. If this is his clone or illusion, then they just need to run in the other direction. He warned the boys that they had to run up to avoid punishment. They came to a cave. The huntress finished checking. Everything was clean. There were no monsters nearby. Then Lee Han used the light spell to make it brighter in the dark cave. The skeletons probably wouldn't have gotten to the guys, and they weren't being chased. But there's one problem with how long the headmaster will take to summon them, so maybe they should have broken through the scum. Although they would not have broken through, there were a lot of them. This is an unsolvable problem. Now it's worth eating. When Nilly ran out of water, the guy used a water spell. She only heard about her from rumors. But as I thought, she's amazing. If the huntress had some magic, then hunting would be much easier. Yoner froze to death and asked for a fire, which Nilly did quite quickly, and on the first attempt, although the fire didn't work at all last time. She's more envious of water magic and wanted one for herself. The young man was struck by the desire of the girl. She should be grateful for the element that she has, he said through tears. They went out to the cliff to see what was happening below, but the headmaster was still summoning skeletons. When Lehan was outraged and didn't express himself very well, which scared the huntress, and so you should not express yourself in the academy. He'd told her that magic came from pure reason, so she shouldn't stop herself from saying that. When she got up and started shouting at the director, who had already annoyed her for all the time here, a silhouette appeared in the bushes. Nilia was very scared, ran and clung to Lehan. It turned out to be an elf and another disciple. They didn't expect such a meeting. The hero invited them to the cave and said that they could rest there, but the prince was not happy, because there was so little food. The orc didn't understand why he should be angry at the guys for what they did, but instead he helps them for some reason. It's very noble. The guy knows exactly what honor is. Elf didn't understand what the guys from the Blue Dragon Tower were doing here, so she assumed that they had also found the map, and now that they had helped them, what should they do? Marathi reminded herself that the motto of their house was, don't forget your grievances. But this phrase also has another meaning, which says that you should only pay for the kindness that she remembers. So for now, she will play pretty girl. Another orc suddenly fell. No one understood how and what to do. Other students also seemed to fall asleep. The elf was very scared. Then she realized that this was the work of our hero. He poisoned the water they were drinking. Before passing out, elf said he couldn't get away with it and fell asleep. They dealt with them. Maybe the guy went a little too far. But if someone hates him for no reason, make it so that it was not in vain. The guys were no less scared because they also drank this water. And the water was clear, and the guys just fell asleep. No one told the prince, because he does not know how to hide his emotions. The hero would not have gone so far if this problem concerned only him. And now he had to because of the guys. He said that the students should be taken to the skeletons. The orc understood and hoped that the guy knew what kind of person this elf was, because there would surely be consequences. After he found out where they were able to get sleeping pills, Yoner said that while walking in the forest, she saw sleepy grass that causes drowsiness if it is crushed and mixed with water. Then Lion asked to take some, in case it is useful. Well, then she definitely did not think that they would use it like this. When the skeletons have taken the knights, they can start the rest of the work, exploring the surrounding area. Having come so far, they can't just go back. They need to check how far the academy walls go. Maybe you can still escape from here by any means. The guy went on the road and the team followed him. The prince tripped on a rock because he was very tired. Durugu was also very tired. The huntress asked me to use my light because she doesn't think they will be caught. They are quite far away and everyone gets tired faster when it gets dark. Lehan called for a light, but then someone from the bushes politely asked the students to turn off the light because he can't sleep. Everyone is very scared. It was the great tree that spoke and it asked them to be silent for it is asking questions here. If they correctly guess his riddle, then he will accept them as dear friends, and if not, then as uninvited guests. The riddle went like this. A dwarf set fire to five candles in the night, but a gust of wind extinguished two of them. An angry man closed all the windows in the room. How many candles were left to burn? The guy knew that this was a trick question, if you don't think about it. 
Then the answer will be three. But over time, all the candles will go out because it will melt. So if it's morning, then there are no candles left. Behind him, the prince shouted three. The boy was very scared for the boy, but the tree replied that this was the correct answer. Then Lehan was very surprised. It turned out that the man was using magic in a riddle so that the candles would never stop burning. The guy was very angry at this smelly magical world. Now the tree should treat them as friends, but it would be a shame if he stopped there. They need to solve another riddle to the one who gives the right answer, to whom he will give something. The second riddle was this. There was a man who was big in the morning, got smaller by noon, and grew again by sunset, and disappeared at night. Who was it? The hero replied that it was a shadow, and the answer turned out to be correct. Everyone was surprised at such a quick guess of a friend. In his previous life, this riddle was quite popular. The riddle of the Sphinx, which was answered by Oedipus King of Thebes. It is slightly different from this one, but the answers are quite close. It was only a person. The tree praised such smart students and invited them to some beautiful natural world with fairy butterflies. The tree offered them something to drink after a long walk. It was like vegetable juice. But after the hero drank it, he felt the pain in all his muscles go away like a glass of ice water that you drink after a summer run. He liked the tree sap very much and asked for more, but the tree asked why he was asking for more when he didn't even introduce himself because it still doesn't know his name. He introduced himself as Lehan from the Vardanaz family. The tree was very scared. It was all because of the rumors, but judging from the fact that the boy first mentioned the name and then the last name, the future of a great magician awaits him and also asked why they came here at night. He replied that they were enjoying a night out the tree immediately realized that they were trying to escape from the academy. It hadn't even been two weeks since they were accepted. Did they really want to leave this place already? The guy still had a couple of questions, he asked the spirit, who replied that it was possible to escape from here, but a freshman could not do it. Then he asked them to tell them how far the walls stretched, but this also remains a mystery to them. Moreover, the walls are enchanted. They will regret if they thoughtlessly touch them, which means that they will not be able to escape through the gaps in the wall. The tree said that they had better not try to leave the academy. The forest is quiet now, but it won't be long before the slumbering monsters wake up. He thanked it for the information. The guy's eyes didn't even waver, as if nothing could stop him. It would be interesting to watch him. He said that he would give him a gift. He gave him the wand, the mage's hand and foot artifacts, the magic wands, the most important ones. Because of them, the students are not happy with what the academy gave them but today the guy became the only first-year student who received a staff. The guy was amazed by such a gift. It's a soothing and refreshing feeling. As expected, this is an unusual guy. Inside this staff, there are spirits for a child of his age. They are not an easy task. He will learn about the powers of the staff as he uses it. Now there is no need for this. Everything has its time. Talent's character. The guy reminded him of the madman Vardanas, whom he had met a century ago. That's the blood of the family. It's time for them to go back. The tree picked up all the magic power and threw it away. Ask the hero not to use magic next to him. His magic is too strong. He will knock down all the trees around and let them remember his riddles. This will be the answer to their question. By the time they left the spirit domain, all the evil spirits had disappeared. It was like a dream. They descended the mountain at sunrise and dragged their tired bodies to bed. Then Alkan came running to the hero, apologizing for his rudeness. He said that there was an urgent matter that the crazy director was gathering everyone outside. The guy even woke up. It looks like he wants to track down all the students who tried to escape. He needs to act more natural than usual. He said that he will wake up the others and go out. It turned out that it was a festival and the director wasn't going to catch anyone, but then what was he up to? The headmaster announced that priests from the Empire had come to visit the Academy this week, and I was surprised that he was so warmly received. They are grateful to him for his time, even though he is busy teaching all these students. It also gives him great joy that they respected priests understand his situation, so they could inform His Majesty the Emperor that they need some money to study the newly discovered ancient magic. It was out of their jurisdiction, so they can't. Lehan noticed that no matter what world he is in, everyone behaves the same if they want to earn more money. Anyway, it's an honor for the girl to meet the headmaster. They are just rumor millers providing religious organizations, and are very happy that they have the opportunity to rearrange their religion to them. Well... These were clearly not ordinary wizards. They just have unimaginable mana reserves. It feels different from other mages' mana, and the headmaster asked if he was impressed by it, but he was a little scared when he got close to it. The priest's moa is quite unique, which is why it is called divine power. Now the young man understood why it felt like this. 
The headmaster also noticed that he could sense mana. Then he didn't understand why the boy hid his talent here. Even a handful of students who can sense mana like you can't be gathered. The guy thinks that he is not smart enough yet, although the director wants to reveal his talent. He even sees the priest for the first time. He certainly guesses that he doesn't know these guys very well, due to the fact that he was born in the house of Vardanaz. Because he and the director are not interested in these things, they are too smart to believe in God. The guy's father also believed that the divine power of priests is only the result of their fanaticism. If you take into account all the rumors that his family is shrouded in, he is sure that there are some that say that his house has a negative attitude towards the clergy. It was necessary that they did not know what kind of family he is from. The headmaster was talking to the youth. The other students were really pitiful. There was no use in saving up for food. The boy asked what religions the director would advise him on. At first he was indignant that the director did not listen to him, and then he was surprised that the director asked him to talk about religions. So, no one has surprised the director for a long time. His intentions are obvious. He wants to join different teachings to extort more. But this is ridiculous. But the director likes it. Great. First of all, he would recommend the Church of Freising, whose teaching is self-sacrifice, and they will easily accept you. The next, Kalasso Church, because they worship the God-loving house of change. The ministers don't even move an eyebrow if you're already serving a different teaching. And the last church of Capileo, the goddess of swordsmen and fencing. They welcome such peculiar people as Lehan. The headmaster doesn't even know that I've attended fencing classes. The professor's attention has never been a good thing before. He had to go. The guy thanked the headmaster for the advice. The headmaster needed to check on the students in the punishment room most likely the students from the Tiger Tower. Yoner came up behind Li Han and finally found him. He was going to the Phrasing Church. She didn't know he was interested in such things. After that, he would go to the Colosso Church, and then to Capileo. She had a basket in her hands. She gave him something. She worships the god of alchemy in one church. Besides, her family made a lot of donations for the benefit of their teachings. They even recognized the girl. He was upset because his house was not doing anything. Yoner did not understand why he was so upset. He said that he would come a little later, since he was a little busy right now. He went to the priest to learn about the teachings of Herr Freising. They were glad to see him, and they thought that he had come to them for the first time. He said that he had long been interested in their religion. The guy asked him to go further, and in the church he asked a certain girl to help a little. She was small, with pink hair and horns on her forehead, and her appearance suggested that she was a half-demon. This is the rarest race of half-bloods. If the ancestors made a pact with demons, there was a chance that it could affect them. Their appearance is quite repulsive to humans, as a result of which many half-demons are extremely closed. The person introduced her. It's Tillizen, a freshman from the Phoenix Tower. He didn't know that there were still some believers in the academy besides her. It's only natural that people who know about the nobility would turn to your religion. The two most important things when entering the priesthood are what you can get and what you need to do. The place looked quite modest, but it's actually full of artifacts that emit mana. The Frising Church has something to do with the production of artifacts, the guy mused. A woman, Miss Migrid, went inside. Someone wanted to become a believer. Seeing her boyfriend was very scared. The ground trembled from her steps, even though she was very petite. She noticed that the young man was surprised. It was all from the artifact she was wearing. She uses a cursed artifact to increase her weight several times over, in the name of the Lord of Frising. She means that their God has taken the pain of the whole world upon himself, and they must share this pain with him, and they do it while wearing cursed artifacts. Lihan was shocked and was advised by the director, of course. If the guy doesn't agree to this, they will understand. If he doesn't want to go with them, he shouldn't hesitate, but it's better to just leave. The woman, of course, can't help but think that this is a disgrace, so she prepared an artifact to greet him. The only one is that it can drain the wearer's mana, and then who would want to wear it at all? The difference between the youth is that he has too much mana, and this artifact is perfect for him. He asked if there is anything else besides the curse in it. He is sure that there is still some effect due to it. Any action has a rotation effect. The more powerful the artifact's effect, the stronger the curse on it. This increases the weight. In addition, the artifact increases divine energy. It also has invisibility magic embedded, but this is not the most important thing. The problem is that it drains the wearer's mana. The guy, of course, understands the feelings of a woman, but he is more than ready for this. She was startled because she was sure that he would refuse. She is so ashamed of herself, she could not recognize his sincere faith. She wiped away tears of joy as she handed him the artifact and welcomed him to their church. 
It was St. Phrasing's belt, and it was an artifact with an invisibility effect. New believers always suffer from a curse that they can't stand. Priests are sure that this time it will not be any different from others, so you should be more careful. The guy fastened his seatbelt. Nothing happened. The guys behind him were in amazement. He asked how to activate invisibility. They were surprised that he didn't feel anything and didn't weaken in any way. And the invisibility spell was written in the letter. Their supreme had granted them an incredible disciple. The young man chanted a spell that read, I close in the night and became invisible, and to return to normal, he said that it opens during the day. Since this thing is cursed and he doesn't feel cursed, he needs to put on more artifacts. So he asked his sister to put more of the burden of master on his shoulders. She praised him. She said it was too early to overexert himself. He assured her that he was able to handle it after all. He still hadn't managed to beg for more, but it would be enough to escape the academy. After the church's lecture, he realized that in general, their doctrine obliges them to do nothing but carry cursed artifacts. Even before he left, the woman handed him a basket of food, which she thought would be useful to him. Coming here was definitely a good idea for him. The warmth in his chest had become rare recently, and the half-demon girl also came up behind him and handed him a basket like this. She said that she was giving it to him because she was serving her master. Such a luxury. It was too much for her. What can you not expect from the Phoenix Tower? They are quite different from others. The woman asked him to take care of this girl. She is too strict with herself. It didn't matter that he was from another tower. He said she could rely on him, and she did. He caught up with Tezzeline and asked if he could call her by her first name, but she said she didn't care. He decided it was time to ask about the Phoenix Tower. They do not interact with others at all, so he is very interested in what they do in their free time. She said that they pray in their rooms in the morning at lunch and even at night. Some now even go to the forests or mountains to pray all night. Of course, the academy has a curfew on weekdays, but their tower got permission because of our situation, so the priests don't need to observe curfew, which means that if he gets their robes, he can go out at any time. She explained that his curse wouldn't be weakened if he wore it. He hadn't thought about it at all. He wanted to know more about Herr Freising. If he's really that interested, the girl will prepare one for him for the next meeting. He laughed, put his hand on her shoulder, and thanked her. The foundation for the escape is laid brick by brick. He already had an invisibility belt and a robe. He asked the girl what she had been eating in the last few days. She said she was happy with what she had now, but Sister Migrid was worried about her. She even asked the young man to keep an eye on her. He suggested that from time to time they would eat together. This should be enough so that she would not worry. And do not worry because he would not betray the one who gave him such a valuable gift. At the moment when they share the food, he will feed her, as a grandmother feeds her grandson. At the same time, in the professors' a conference room, everyone was sitting at a large table. Professor Half-Troll assumed that they were here today for a basic horse-riding training course, and found out if the professor was invited for the subject. The dwarf thought Bendozal would take care of it, but he disappeared after trying to find the unicorn, and judging because they still haven't heard anything about it, the headmaster interrupted her. They don't have to worry. The professor who will take care of it is already ready. The teachers were very happy, because he was able to find a teacher in such a short time. He really looks like a real director of the academy. It was Thunder Choidar. If it really is her, then it will be all right. She is a very famous girl. Her friends are known both inside and outside the empire, no matter how separate they are. Not happy. Only the dwarf was indignant that they chose her, his aunt. She always whines so much that even the dwarves from the east hate her. But the headmaster doesn't care what kind of dwarf she is. He's only hired a professional in his field. He should just accept the fact. The woman was standing in the forest and waiting for the lesson to start. There was a huge bird behind her. The students were standing at the academy and waiting for everything to start. Everyone was very much waiting for this lesson. Basic writing skills. The nobles looked worried, but it makes sense and something can go wrong. Everyone is already used to writing, so they think that this subject will be easy. A huge crow appeared in the sky and the students were frightened because it was flying at them. The prince did not have time to run away. A crow grabbed him with its claws and carried him away. He begged for help. Lihan told everyone to calm down and keep low, avoid being seen by the bird, and stay still. He is more surprised by the things that the guys do quickly. But he still didn't understand where such a bird came from or where the director was. This is the greatest academy. Why is there such a terrible security here inside? A girl was indignant. A guy next to her asked her to calm down because this is not the time to behave like this. The bird grabbed this guy. The young man said to stay put. But it's very strange why it didn't touch the girl who was screaming. He didn't believe it, but it was because of the color of the hair. He told the others to quickly cover their heads with their capes. This bird attacks the fair-haired ones. 
The girl behind the guy said that he is very cool, so quickly makes a decision and understands the situation. He did not know her. He said that again the tigers were trying to get in touch with Vardonaz. The guys immediately picked up and were ready to deal with her. She explained that it had nothing to do with Moradi. It was just a misunderstanding. The princess blocked her from the others and said that she vouched for her. The people were surprised because her imperial highness stood up. In such a otherwise, they won't touch it. It turned out that her name was Rowena and it was a knight of her highness. Our hero was surprised that she has a personal defender. Every rule has an exception. They can't take an escort with them. But it won't be a problem if he enters as a student. That's how she circumvented the rules. The guy felt sorry for the prince. They are both members of the imperial family. The princess knight wanted to ask Lehan something. She thinks the crow has calmed down a bit, but doesn't know when it will attack again. In that case, she asked him to take the lead and shoot her down. Lehan was very surprised. The other students also said that they rely on him, are confident in his leadership qualities, and are waiting for orders. He didn't want this. Being a group leader for a school project is always terrible. The guys around him were ready to fight and waiting for orders, and he thought about it. A couple of days ago, in the Blue Dragon Tower, the same knight announced that the Blue Dragon Tower is headed not by Her Highness, but by Vardanaz. She has always been the leader even before entering. There must be some reason for such a decision. The knight needs to see everything with his own eyes. And now he was going to reveal that secret, and Rowena couldn't imagine that the student's trust could be easily won by just feeding them once. If our hero's assumptions about the bird were correct, he asked someone for something shiny. With the help of a mirror, he began to invite the huge bird to himself. When it flew at them, he told them to duck down, get in a line and build a wall. And he hid behind them at the count of three. And he ordered everyone to crouch down and let out a light spell. It blinded the bird and it flew away into the sky. If it's just a big bird, then the best way was just to scare it. And as expected, the guy was incredible. At first, the guys weren't sure but they didn't think he would do so well. Now they had to solve the problem with the prince and that silver-haired guy. The bird threw them right on the ground in front of the students. The owner praised her for her courage and regretted that she was so scared. Now they will appear together. She jumped down in front of the students and greeted them. The young man knew that all this commotion was caused by the professor. She looked very familiar. Maybe she is somehow connected with Professor Ergolm. She approached Li Han and said that he was quite talented. He immediately remembered how Professor Nome did the same thing. Deja vu. Everyone was surprised by the new professor. The guy asked if she was somehow related to the professor of alchemy. She introduced herself as his aunt, the hero. Thought that he should no longer stand out in front of the teachers. The students told her that he was Master Ergolim's best student. That he liked the boy so much that he invited him to his hut. And Lehan tried to stop him, but he had already said everything. Since things didn't go according to plan, he should leave a good impression of himself. She introduced herself as Thunder Choidar. Her course was supposed to be supervised by Professor Bendazol, but he disappeared during the search for the unicorn. Everyone was very scared. Well, they also began to admire her, because she is a famous researcher, subdued the behemoth, and was the first to explore the Quarry of Souls. He didn't understand why no one was worried about this fact, that someone was missing. She asked if anyone knew why she came here together with the Thunderbird. Her massive body and quick maneuvers are not typical of ordinary birds. She can even control lightning bolts and whirlwinds, Thunderbird's intimidating monster. Our hero did not understand how she was able to bring such a monster to the academy, but it's definitely worth checking if everything is in order here. Their goal for the semester was to ride a Thunderbird, and she just laughed, because it wouldn't take them even a decade to do it. She pointed at the guy, and he suggested that she wanted to see how they would react to a dangerous monster, but the Princess Knight did not support, because this is not a lesson in confrontation. The guy's answer was correct. She understood why her nephew liked him, and also asked if they knew what dangers they might encounter on the journey, but they should be prepared for anything. The point of the subject remains to learn horse riding, so they don't have to worry. She was going to go to the stables and invited everyone to go with her. She instructed Lihan to guide the students there. She hopes that he will help her in lectures. The guy did not understand why they choose him everywhere. When it comes to riding, a horse is the first animal we think of, and if you can't ride it, then you can't ride other creatures. So if you want to ride something more interesting, you should learn to ride that animal first. All the students are calm. The guy understands them. Because for everyone here, riding is a common thing. The professor smiled at the guy. He felt some kind of feeling and told Yoner to be careful. This lesson was not limited to riding horses. They reached the stables. Everyone admired the horses. They're all thoroughbred and good. The guys can't believe they will ride them. 
The teacher noticed that he was already impatient to ride, but you need to be able to choose a good horse. She asked him to go out one by one and draw lots. The result was this. The first was the prince. The others were indignant, because he could not even peel the wheat from the hymen, and he smiled and said that he heard losers complaining. He ran up to a huge sports horse with red eyes and chose it, because horses should be big and strong. He even stretched out his hand to it and said that it was already listening to him, but it hit him in the face, and he flew off, falling to the floor. This is what you get when you choose a horse that looks dangerous, one of the students told him. Everyone should know what is best of these animals is small and noble. He wanted to stroke a cute horse, but it bit him on the head. A disciple from another tower was laughing at them, because they only know how to talk, and they can't handle horses. So the horse that was standing next to him spat in his face. All the horses were strange and aggressive. The teacher said that they would learn to ride horses. But the first task was to make friends with all these scary horses. Maybe they will open up to them if they take care of them with a certain amount of care, which is their goal, to make friends with at least one of them. Li Han knew that these were definitely not ordinary horses. She must have something up her sleeve. To begin with, he wanted to choose the most obedient-looking horse. The teacher took his hand and asked him to go with her. She led him to a very beautiful and calm horse. There's no way she would give the best apprentice nephew an ordinary horse. She wants him to take care of him. As everyone thought, the professor picked up the guy's horse personally. It's really a very good horse. It's also the wildest and most stubborn. Maybe even the monster will be easier to fix. It's difficult for an ordinary freshman, but it will probably get some bonus. In order for him to deal with the Thunderbird, it should be easy, the teacher told him, which is why he shouldn't stand out. The professor came out of his house. His aunt met him. She said that first, you need to say hello. He did not forget. They have not seen each other for so long. So she decided to take a look at the house of her nephew. He invited her inside. The professor was angry with the student because he told him that he did not like to meet with his relatives. Lehan was embarrassed and said that she was the one who asked her to bring her here. His aunt had said the house was very dusty the last time he'd cleaned, which was why he was still alone. And that was what made the dwarf angry. It's only a matter of time before he finds a girlfriend and stops living in this shack alone. He said it's time for lunch. When the aunt asked the boy if he had eaten, the professor ordered him to say no. The guy quickly caught the gist and said that he was very hungry. The man added that he was still growing up, so he should not skip meals. My aunt said they could relax. She would cook them some oriental food, even though he didn't really like it, but he agreed anyway. While they were waiting for lunch, he decided to chat with his student. But then he noticed something glowing from under the cape and asked what it was on his chest. He took out the staff that the tree had given him. The man was very happy for the boy. He said that he felt the energy of the forest, asked where he got it. The guy was a little hesitant to tell him what really happened. In the end, he said that he went out into the forest and met the spirit of the tree, and he just gave it to him. If you think about it that way, life is a series of accidents. Both aunt and nephew noticed that he was just trying to avoid the question. The man said that probably all he was asked riddles because the spirit is very well known and quite problematic. You cannot ignore its introduction and knowledge. The guy asked if this staff has some special effect. There's definitely something hidden in it. Maybe some cool ability. For example, it becomes invincible when you hold it in your hands or receive spirit magic. Or maybe a cheat ability that absorbs the owner's mana. Aunt brought lunch. She said that the staff has an excellent ability to plow. What else did he expect from the spirit of the forest with him? For sure can be easily cultivated. He also wanted to plant something himself. The teacher was happy with this initiative. So what did he want to grow? He wanted to grow something edible, if that was the case. Then she was willing to help him. So, she invited him to the garden after lunch. They were standing there, and she told him that the most important thing was potatoes and sweet potatoes. It was still a very long time to wait for the harvest, but when he picked it, he would be very happy. He said that he would look at things positively. He was warned about this. He planted a sprout, then my aunt turned to him. Everyone in the tower was hungry. Suddenly there was a light. A guy came out with a basket of food. Our hero brought food to the guys from his tower. He got a lot thanks to the writing professor. As expected from their Vardanaz, he is the best. A lot has changed over the past week, and he is sure that they are hungry. He asked them to wait a bit while he made the soup. The guy began slicing vegetables, cooking a roast, and Yoner said that he looked like an experienced alchemist during an experiment. After tasting the soup that had been prepared, he said that they could carry the plates and they would eat now. A guy came up behind him and said that he wanted to ask for something. He asked him to take some soup to the princess. When she opened the door, he handed her a plate of food, and she was surprised it was for her. 
He said that everyone had already started eating, so don't be shy and don't fly. After tasting one spoonful, she was struck by the taste, but it would be worth sitting down and eating quietly, he thought. It seems that she is very hungry. The girl thanked the guy and said that she would not remain in debt. The boys asked how Her Majesty was doing, and he said she liked it. The boy replied that it was a relief, and Lehan was the best. The guy wanted to ask him about this in the future, so he asked for permission now, and also added that they will give twice as much silver as now. The guy's eyes lit up. He immediately agreed, because he will be paid twice as much. For them, a noble helps the imperial family, it's an honor. But to think that they care so much about it, he was moved by the guys. The family, Her Highness, seems incredible. And of course, the prince is an exception. During the vampire's afternoon class, the teacher thought that according to the contract, he should only teach lessons at the agreed time. He doesn't have to do it anymore. But this is a huge amount of mana. He will regret if he misses such a talent. When he asked if the guy had any questions, Lehan thought that the man had realized that he was using his item for his own selfish purposes. He asked him to explain what this training was for. The teacher didn't understand. Didn't he know the name of the course? The guy thought. He told him to ask him questions when he asked the next one. What is the relationship between the rotation of the sphere and the battle? For a couple of seconds, the teacher thought about how to explain this and decided to show it by example. He can kill it with just a feather. The young man didn't really like this example. But in battle, the level of his spell is not so important, and the weakest one is enough to take the enemy's life. The reason he's learning here is to give rotation to an item, which increases the destructive power of his spells. Even if the magic rocket is a first-round spell, the level of magic varies depending on the caster. It will be difficult for a mage who has not learned enough about the base to show off their abilities in battle. The terrifying sounds of the battlefield paired with the bloodthirsty atmosphere have a huge impact, but a trained mage is focused on combat, even in an extreme situation. The teacher let in some rays and disappeared. The explosion was apparently caused by the collision of two spells, but nothing seems to have broken. The teacher put his arm around his shoulder and told him that he could do such things, which was a surprise because he had lost sight of him. He was impressed by this magic. It seems that the teacher did not even break a sweat. In the vampire's opinion, it sounded extremely obvious, not the most appropriate answer that he expected. The guy said nothing and thanked. Of course, our protagonist understood that he could see his teacher in a different light at an unscheduled time, because earlier it seemed to him that he was trying to shirk his duties, but now he understands that everything he did here made sense. He understood that you can get something other than good grades, so at the same time, he called out to his teacher, asking him to ask him another question. The teacher, of course, began to get interested, because what kind of question is gnawing at his student? So at the same moment, our main character said that he recently used a low-level control, but it is very difficult for him. The vampire teacher realized what was going on, so at the same time, he told our hero that he had a lot more mana than the others, which is exactly what our protagonist has been told all the time lately. He couldn't even believe that his master had figured it out so quickly, so he must have known something about him. It is his teacher who can offer him a realistic way out of the situation. He was wondering what he will teach him. Well, as soon as the vampire touched his hand, the mana drain ability was activated at the same time. This is a strong and evil high circle magic that consumes the target's mana. Would the teacher really use it on the students? Even the main character asked him to wait, not to do anything like that. But the vampire just kept talking, or what? so that his student would stand still. As soon as a little time passed, we can notice that the vampire got into the inner world of our hero. He noticed an incredible beauty there. He noticed a sea of mana. He couldn't believe his eyes. So at the same moment he went out, he just went and fell to the floor. She's the main character who asked him if he was okay. The main character tried to reach out to him, but at the same time the teacher said that he was fine, because he was just trying to reduce the amount of mana of his student to make it easier to control but it didn't work out, because he had much more mana than the vampire expected. Usually, when someone has more mana than they can hold, they lose control of their power and faint, just like they did now. But this was a professor of such an institution, so they should know their stuff very well. If there is so much mana that even a professor like him has lost consciousness, then how much mana does our protagonist have at all? Our main character said that he just can't believe that such an extreme method didn't work. It just means that he can't be helped. As soon as these words were spoken, the vampire said that there was a way. Our main character was very surprised by this, so he was already happy. But the teacher replied that he used low-level control, really just to raise something in the air. Our main protagonist said that he didn't do it for this purpose, 
he remembered what he actually used this skill for. At the same time, the vampire's teacher said that it was just an instinct, because it might seem like he had lost control, but as long as his will as a magician is connected to the item, it is simply controlled by his own instinct. This gave our main character the idea that he managed to launch the director's stone of his own free will, but he still decided that he should forget about it. The teacher continued, They say that the instincts are very strong, because if you use them, then his ability to control mana will improve. As soon as these words were said, we should have realized that the teacher was actually an expert, because everyone should have understood that our main character had a lot of hopes for nothing. While he was trying not to think about everything, at the same time, the vampire teacher took out a certain ball, while asking if our character was ready. Of course, our protagonist didn't understand anything, so at the same time the vampire teacher said that he would aim at him, or rather at his jaw. He asked his disciple to use low-level control to defend himself, because that was the only way to survive this. Our hero thought that this was some kind of nonsense, but at the same moment the first sphere flew at him. He started dodging while cursing the school, so at one point he was incredibly tired. The teacher told him that he had made it. He had an incredibly good understanding of control, but our hero only thought that it was stupid to trust a professor from this school. As soon as he thought about it, the teacher asked me to thank him, because he had solved his problem, otherwise he would have died. As soon as the teacher gave a hand to his student, he asked him to use low-level control to control him. As soon as these words were said, the balloon was already in the air, near our protagonist. The spell was cast, so that at one point the ball began to move at the will of our protagonist, then down, then up. The teacher looked at the result and said that it was very good, because it will need to be used instead of the star spirit stone for training. This all seems strange to our hero, but the teacher said that you need to try. As soon as our protagonist tried it, then at the same moment everything worked out for him, the teacher said that it is a powerful experience that directly affects the development of the magician, but the stone that he used is a tool for insufficiently capable magicians, and our character is no longer one of them. So he asked at the same time pick up the iron ball and circle it. After all, when abilities increase, teachers give new tasks similar to what was before. Everyone understood that there were two types of people in the world, those who froze when faced with deadly danger, and those who reacted faster and more powerfully than usual. It is our protagonist who belongs to the second type, which means that he has the potential to become a battle mage. If that's the case, then it's up to the vampire to train him more effectively. The sun had already appeared on the horizon, and our protagonist met up with the girl Oni, who said that she hadn't been waiting for him for long, but noticed that he didn't look very well. Of course, Lehan said that he was fine, but we could all understand that he was just back from class and Professor Vlad. As soon as they started talking, they gave him the priest's robe that he had asked for. So at the same time, Li Han handed her what he had promised, but they refused. She said that Lord Pressure was suffering even now. It would not be fair for her to enjoy such excellent food. Li Han thought that Sister Merid had actually given him a difficult task. So at that moment, she reached into her bag, telling him to give everything he had prepared for her to someone who needed it more, because the tea would be more than enough for her. As soon as she mentioned it, our protagonist seemed to catch fire. He asked if he could make it, because he is fond of teas. We in turn understand that most priests prefer bitter drinks, such as green tea or coffee. Dissolin probably thinks that he will prepare something similar, but it was not there. He will have his own taste buds. They started shouting that he was definitely not making tea, although he promised it. But as soon as he turned to her, he made a face that he was trying very hard, and also said that in his family they do it that way. Dissolin started to say that everything was fine, but at the same time still said that he puts too much sugar. It was after these words that Lehan began to talk about how he felt that something wanted to find his family's recipe too pretentious. Dissolin realized that there was nowhere else to go, so at the same time he said that he would drink it. As soon as she sat down at the table, our hero was already ready. He served her a special milk tea, which he asked to try. As soon as the first sip was taken, Dissolin enjoyed the taste. On top of the faint sweetness that spread across her tongue, there was a sharp, refreshing note. She really liked it all. Lehan noticed that Dissolin liked the tea. She definitely fell for his bait, so he decided to make the next tea. He would add sugar, nuts, and cocoa to the boiling water. Then milk. It turned out to be a special cocoa tea of the Vardanazis. Dissolin didn't trust this tea because it was more like soup than tea, but this time Lehan wondered if she really wanted to insult his family's recipe after all. Dissolin realized that she wasn't going anywhere now, so she tried another cup of tea, which she also liked very much. Lehan had already started making plans to make her eat the bread he was making as well but Dissolin had already finished her tea, 
so our main protagonist took action. He came up behind her and told her that now that she knew it was delicious, then from now on, it would be fine. Go to the specified location. Dissolin asked him not to sound like villains, so as soon as it was already evening, he thanked him for the tea. Many people were returning from their tower, but not our Lihan, who understood that it was train time, so the students definitely had to stay in the dorm. And he, as the most ordinary devout young priest, will be the one who goes to pray in the middle of the night. As the most ordinary devout young priest, he doesn't know what traps will come his way, so he definitely decided to be vigilant. Fortunately, there was definitely nothing on the first floor, and this is his first time walking on the first floor. These huge halls from the moment of admission. Even so, there was no need to worry about exploring the area. But at the same time, he noticed that there was someone who looked like a teacher in front of him. But as soon as he turned around, Lehan noticed that it was a student from the Black Turtle Tower. Of course, he knew that the one in front of him was walking without making a sound, but this gait was similar to the fact that he was training. He understood that people like him were not particularly welcome in the Empire, because of the stereotype that mice are beastmen, or thieves, or vagabonds. Of course, the main character would not want to be biased, but the intention of the one who was next to him was clearly visible, because if they have similar goals, then you only need to ask that student to be calm, or that will be the end. He knew it was best to cooperate. As soon as the student turned around, he breathed a sigh of relief, because he thought that the professor was behind him, but he noticed that it was just another student. Lehan asked to introduce himself, so at the same time we understand that his name was Ratford. He belonged to a family called the White Crow. The students don't ignore him outright, but he still feels like you're out of the group. So to prove himself to the tower's peers, he started looking for a place to store basic necessities. So once he did a thorough search, he found a door that might lead to the vault itself. The key that was in his hands Ratford made without any difficulties, thanks to his talent. The main character noticed that he was very good at it, so Ratford was happy, because he spent all his free time creating it. But he asked who was standing in front of him, because judging by the physique as well as actions, Lehan is like a student from the Tiger Tower. But our protagonist only said that he is Lehan Vardanaz from the Dragon Tower. As soon as these words were said, this mouse just broke loose. He was so scared, because in front of him was the same person from the great family of aristocrats. Of course, our main character asked him not to be surprised so much. He wanted to work together, because it's better than alone. But Ratford still couldn't believe it, because he was facing a student who had an incredibly huge status, to which Lyhan replied that of course you can, because it was he who suggested all this. Ratford, of course, was still in shock, but our main character suggested not to stand still. He offered to open the door that stood in front of them. Ratford wasn't sure because the doors in front of them were protected by magic, so it would have been difficult to open them in the usual way. As Lehan continued to stare at the door, he noticed that there was a very familiar sign on it, so she asked her partner to move away. As soon as the partner left, our main character handed her the key, after which the door was opened. Ratford couldn't believe it, because how did the student have such a key? But our main character didn't see anything wrong with it, he just said the word that he stole it from the director's mailbox. Of course, he didn't tell anyone that he had found this key in the message from the headmaster, because it had come to him by accident, but he didn't even know that he would need it. He knew that he had to be careful, because there must be traps inside that door, and the door led down. As soon as Lehane wanted to go down, Ratford asked him to wait, because he heard voices, as if someone was down there. Of course, everyone was curious, because how they received external supplies. It must be that everyone uses a certain underground path. After all, if all this happens during curfew, then the students will definitely not know about it. So our protagonist was sure that the provisions were definitely at the bottom. At first they thought it wasn't a good idea, but as soon as they went down a bit, it was already very dark, so they decided to use color. But Lehan realized that this was a bad idea, because you don't need to do anything stupid. The director is definitely hiding this place, so it's unlikely that he made it easy to navigate. Ratford knew that was a good point, but who was actually standing in front of him? He thought that his new friend was used to such situations. Is it possible that he shouldn't even say the name? Because according to rumors, even the prince and princesses can't breathe easily in his presence. That our main character was able to subdue the Thunderbird with one spell, is it possible that all these rumors were true? While Ratford was flying in the clouds, they had already arrived at the place they needed to go. They had arrived at the storage floor. Lehan was about to go forward, but as soon as he took one step, something strange happened. All the lights and flashlights abruptly turned on, and he also noticed that someone strange was coming. 
Most likely it was the warehouse keeper who started counting all the goods. Of course, this was surprising because our main protagonist noticed that everyone was so responsible about storage. But just at that moment, a man stood behind him, who was all wrapped in some kind of paper. He asked who the people in front of him were. Of course, our protagonist realized that they were noticed, but they realized that they needed to stay calm. He wanted to use light magic to blind his opponent. But as soon as he looked, he saw that the eyes of the one who noticed them were closed. It is said that when a person loses one of their senses, the others begin to improve to compensate for the loss. Even if this is true, the person who stood in front of them definitely could not find them, because they did not give up a single sound, and their smell is interrupted by tons of others. How did he find them? Of course, we understand that this person who was standing in front of them could sense all the mana that came from our protagonist. He said that judging by the huge amount of mana, it was the headmaster himself who was standing in front of him, and he asked him to forgive him for being rude, so he would go back to work right away. Our hero could not believe it, because really he would just leave. And why did the director remember him? Did he mix them up? But what was more important was that he said that Lihan has a huge amount of mana. Ratford looked like he didn't understand anything, but our main protagonist said that they were detected because of their mana. He certainly understood that it would not be easy, but definitely not so difficult. Lihan was about to leave, but his assistant said that he could hear too many footsteps in the direction they were going. So at the same time, he began to stress not only our character, but also himself in the area where he first appeared. Our main protagonist didn't understand why his partner was so worried at all, but as soon as they arrived at the place they came from, they noticed that the door was locked. Of course, our main character didn't worry. He said that he probably understood what they needed to do, because unlike his partner, who was a thief in a small village, he grew up on a lot of stories, and thanks to this, his imagination works much better in such situations. It was at this moment that he noticed a strange tile that stood out from all the others. Clicking on it, the door immediately opened, a passage opened up in front of them. But how did our main protagonist even know about this? Is it really because he comes from such an aristocratic family? But the only thing he could think about was that he would finally be able to escape. After all the suffering he had endured, he definitely wouldn't be able to take any more. Of course, he immediately set off, but one thing we can understand is that there are several rules for Inograd employees. They should not talk about what they see, initiate conversations, ask questions, and so on. If priests or students from the other end of the road appear in front of them, the employees will not say anything to them. This is what struck our heroes, because all the disinterest of those who met them was simply amazing. Well, since that was the case, they decided that they didn't need to try not to be suspicious, so I decided to go over and ask the cabbie if they could go with them. The man said that of course it is possible, and it was necessary to calm down that the problem was over. Of course, the only thing that bothered our main character was that his new partner continued to make him feel uncomfortable, but those people who were sitting on the cart were still silent. This world was definitely difficult. Inograd, in turn, is a symbol of the Empire and a magician, which means that it is full of enemies. Of course, there are not only political forces involved, but also important things. Lehan still can't believe that they are luring students in and not letting them get out. It was at this point that their carriage was getting smaller. He looked outside and noticed that one of the professors was right in front of him. At first he thought that they were probably caught, but then he realized that he should be silent for a while, because he even doubted that they were noticed. He suggested that first just to observe, but what did their professor get there in the first place? Of course we understand that this was the task of the director, who asked to deliver the imperial family the goods that the teacher will receive. Of course it was rather inconvenient to deliver artifacts every month, and besides, everyone in front of her was intimidated by her smile. Of course, one of the people heard something, so at the same time she readied her sword, but the teacher thought that they were the ones who were ready to attack her. The man with the ears said that it wasn't about her, because the head was sounding the alarm. There was definitely some kind of incident. We can see that by this time the last warning had already been issued. Everyone was asked to identify themselves, and people who called themselves merchants appeared in front of them. Of course, the cabman knew that this was not funny, because they might have noticed that the people who called themselves merchants had weapons on their backs. As soon as everyone noticed this, they immediately decided to take off their clothes, saying that the porters in the school were rather unusual, since they noticed that they had weapons with them. The porters at the same time realized that it was time to get out their weapons, but the robbers were clearly prepared for everything, and they were not obviously difficult thieves because all the arrows that flew at them were reflected with the help of a protective field. The thieves started shouting for them to drop all weapons published. 
he requested that they save the empire from the path of corruption. Everyone realized that this was the anti-mages, a terrible group whose people denied magic. Of course, the coachman didn't succeed, so the thieves had no choice but to attack them themselves. They said they would kill the coachman for the sake of the Twilight team. But just as the thieves were about to launch their attack, the curtain of order was activated. A huge field covered all the cabs. Everyone was happy, because now Professor showed himself, and the teacher herself was happy, because she actually managed to repel the blows of the thieves with her barrier. But still, she knew that the situation was not good, because her enemies and people from the Twilight team, who killed countless mages, it will be very difficult for her and his mage to face such enemies that were in front of her. All we can do now is continue to protect the caravans, as well as send a request for help, and hold on until the director himself arrives. As soon as the thieves noticed that they could not break through the barrier, they said that they needed to prepare this. At the same time, some strange thing was unpacked. It gradually began to suck out the mana from behind the teacher, after which the barrier that surrounded all the cabbies was removed. The teacher said that magic isn't all-powerful. There are many ways to disarm spells, such as items like the one you were currently using. In front of them was an ancient relic, the kind of gem that occasionally appears in ruins and dungeons. But how did the people who were ahead of it even get it? The teacher understood that since her mana was being absorbed every time she tried to use it, she simply wouldn't be able to hold the spell. So what could she possibly do? While she was thinking about this, one of the thieves jumped out from behind her. He wanted to hit her, but at the same time he passed out. No one could believe it, because it also happened, how did he even lose consciousness in flight? Well, of course we understand that it was our protagonist who used the club. He was glad that he was not noticed. Ten minutes earlier, just before this incident, as soon as the warning was announced, our main character believed that this was probably one of the director's traps. So at the same time, he asked Ratford to hide somewhere in the carriage, and also dictated something in his ear so that no one else would hear. Ratford was terrified of the plan, but there was nothing he could do. Lahane was sure that this was the Twilight Team, a group of anti-mages and it was likely that the situation would get worse if he didn't get in their way. The first skill he used was hiding in the night. We go back to that moment again. One of the thieves was knocked out by our main protagonist. He went up to his professor and said that he was the one who did this to the thief. The professor was scared because what was the student doing next to them? But the first thing our main character said was that T.A. was in charge, because they definitely didn't have much time. The professor realized that it was really necessary to hurry, so she told him that she had sent a request for help to the school. People were coming to them soon, and until then she asked him to stay invisible so as not to get hurt. As soon as she said those words, the thieves launched their new attack, their movements so frantic that they could use their daggers to deflect arrows that flew close to them. Our protagonist asked why the professor doesn't use magic, because it would be so much easier. But the professor said that it was all because of the ancient religion that absorbed it. But how does Lehan manage to remain invisible at all? She remembered that he had an endless ocean of mana, so he asked to borrow it for her. It was at this moment that she used an indestructible spear. This ability seemed amazing to our main character. The thieves were shocked because how could the professor use magic in the first place? Well, of course it was too late. Because the artifact was a little destroyed, the teacher began to feel that her mother was coming back to her. So she decided to finish off all the remaining ones. She used Flesh-Tearing Thunderwolf. It was this creature that appeared during the use of the spell that chased after the thieves, and Laihan noticed that although a little, but his professor's mana was leaking somewhere, he noticed that the relic was still working. So the thieves thought that this was the very moment when they could surround the professor and attack altogether. The professor knew that she didn't have time to deal with the relic. She screamed, so our main character had no other choice. He started working surreptitiously again. He started knocking out other thieves with his bat. At first, they couldn't understand what was going on, but then, they realized that there was someone invisible around them. Our hero could not understand, because really they reacted so quickly, and the person who stood in front of him had exactly a different aura, which was different from all the others. He understood that this particular person should not be allowed to approach the professor, so he decided to come out of invisibility. The thieves finally noticed him. They didn't expect to be tricked by some kid. They were sure that they would make him pay for it. But of course, our main character wasn't so stupid. He immediately ran to the relic. Of course, this was a deliberate act on Lehan's part. Because it would be dangerous to face them directly, he immediately activated invisibility again. The main thief knew that he could handle the opponent he noticed. But just as he was about to start chasing, the main protagonist started using the very balls that his vampire teacher had given him. Everyone realized that this was definitely an unusual boy. Lehan, on the other hand, was very tired. 
All the sensations were different from all that had been in class. His brain seemed to melt. Even so, he needed to concentrate, because if he exposed himself even a little, he could definitely die. The only thing on his mind at that moment was to throw an iron ball at them, then return it, then repeat. He was thinking so hard, so focused that his nose was bleeding, that it was definitely putting him in an awkward position. He couldn't have expected this outcome. He knew that something strange was happening to him. Did his mana run out? He definitely couldn't delay. Or was he just concentrating too much? In any case, he knew that it was impossible to delay because the relic was activated again. First, he had to stop the thieves who were rushing at him. Of course, he tried to throw another iron ball at them, but it was instantly cut down. The thief noticed that there was a smell of blood in the air, so he realized that it was the blood of our main protagonist. He told his thieves to keep an eye out for the smell of blood on the side of the relic. Li Han knew that if this was going to happen, he should hit them first, and it was at that moment that he picked up the sword that was lying on the floor and wounded one of the thieves. The chief noticed that most likely the mage had changed weapons, so he asked everyone to throw some light dust in the direction of the relic. As soon as the dust of light was thrown, many thieves noticed that there was blood on the floor. The chief asked them to calm down, because if they follow the smell, they will succeed. But as soon as they tried to smell something, they realized that all the smells were mixed up. The thieves sensed something was wrong. They realized that they should not give the Lihan a chance to attack surreptitiously, because most likely it is close. As soon as these words were spoken, the blow was already dealt to the other two thieves. And the chief realized that this was a great decision, that he hid among the wounded so that they could not smell him. The main thing was that he had not met such a person as our main character for a long time. At the same moment, he introduced himself as Garrix. From now on, he will definitely fight seriously, because since he hid his smell, he thinks that Garrix will not be able to smell anything. But this was not the case. The main character thought that it was too easy to catch our main protagonist. So at the same time, he struck our hero. He said it wasn't too hard to figure him out, because once Lahane had killed a couple of people, Garrix could now clearly hear his breathing. He thought that it was time to end everything, so he activated a certain ability that formed several balls around him. At the same time, they all quickly began to fly towards our main character, but did not touch him. If he was only one step closer, he would definitely be in huge trouble, because Garrix's swordsmanship is several times superior to his own, and he can't even believe that all he has to do is block the blows of a person who can't even see him. Attack after attack, and our main character is already lying on the floor, with tremor in his hands. Was he really in danger now? Was Garrix in the aura stage that Al Rarlog had mentioned? The assassin noticed that his opponent was scared, but he was still curious about what his face actually looked like when it was distorted with fear. Of course, Lion didn't want to die like this because he had heard that skilled swordsmen can infuse their sword with mana, and our main protagonist was just training to use it. As soon as he thought about it, he decided to give it a try. The killer was incredibly scared because what was happening now? In fact, our hero did everything right. He had so much mana that he could not even think of where to spend it, so he will put everything into the sword. As soon as he was done, he immediately decided to attack his opponent, who flew away at the same time. The thief couldn't believe that such a simple sword swing could be so strong. What did our main protagonist do in the first place? The thief was a little scared. He knew that he didn't want to lose like this. He had to kill Lehan. But our hero also had problems. At one point, he realized that his body simply did not move. Could it be that this was the side effect from using so much mana? Our main protagonist was also alarmed by the fact that the thief who was right in front of him got up from his knees and flew straight at him. Well, as soon as the thief was a centimeter away from him, then at the same moment he started coughing and bleeding and just passed out. Most likely it was the effect of the mana sword that was used to attack it. Li Han just collapsed. He was more concerned about whether the teacher was okay or not. That's when he saw her. She was running straight towards him. Li Han couldn't believe that the professor had managed it even though she was surrounded by opponents. The teacher said that she would check her students' wounds first, and then everything else. She said that now our main protagonist can rest easy, because their most reliable person is rushing straight to them. Of course, this was their director. The main character would never have thought that he would be happy to see the skeleton. So at the same time, he realized that he needed to rest for a while. The headmasters, as soon as they arrived, turned to the professor. He said that he was very sorry that he put them in danger. He should have known about this to everyone much in advance. The teacher began to say that no one expected this particular squad to be there. But at the same time, the vampire's teacher appeared and said that the dean should have known about this. The headmaster didn't like it at all. 
So Vlad went on to say that what was more important was that the person who was behind them was a very important staff in the very squad that attacked them. Not only was he good at battles, but many gave him the name Mage Slayer. The headmaster realized that since he was still breathing, he would take care of him. Of course, the skeletons did not give rest to all these traces from the battle. He understood that this was definitely not the work of mercenaries. Was it really all the work of our hero? The teacher immediately began to say that if not for the help of our main character, it would be very dangerous for her. She asked the director to get away with it, but the headmaster said that it wasn't just that. He just couldn't believe that a disciple who came not long ago could use magic. He said that such a disciple is incredibly talented, and the fact that he used more than just magic during the battle makes him incredibly interested in him. He wants to learn as much as possible about our hero. He personally wants to do it, just like the traditional method. But despite the desire of the headmaster, he simply cannot do this, because it was he who created the rule that all students should develop together, equally. It was at this point, while our main character was passed out, that the director spun several of his little copies, telling them not to forget to take the old one with them, because it was an incredible threat. When he visited his little workers, he noticed that the vampire teacher was doing something strange. The director approached him and asked him what he was doing here, to which Vlad replied that he was just exploring the strange poses in which all the thieves froze. The director realized that it actually looked strange, even wanted to assume that it was still the work of our main character. Is this some kind of magic that was not available before? But at the same time, the professor raised her hand. She said that it was all her doing, she just hit all the thieves. We are transported to the school building, where our main character realizes that he is lying in some strange, soft, and warm place. As soon as he opened his eyes, he saw the headmaster in front of him, after which he was incredibly scared. He started to turn his head because he didn't know where he was, but the professor said that it was fine, because he probably didn't understand anything. But all he needed to know was that he did a good job. Lehan realized that the teacher probably came in after he passed out. Everyone praised him, of course, but the headmaster said that even though he did a great job, he still tried to escape from the school grounds. Lian knew he was in trouble, and the professor had left him there because he had tried to help her, and it had all turned out that way. At the same time, the director continued to say that he still couldn't figure out how he was able to get through the underground entrance in the first place. Did he pick up one of the keys that the skeleton left behind? Our main protagonist realized that all these keys are traps. The skeleton went on to say that it was probably too difficult to get through the same person who was in the dungeon, so he warned him that this time he would not succeed, because that path would be blocked. As the evening approached, the headmaster realized that it was time to say that he was very grateful to him. For showing such a brave act, fighting against that group to protect the professor was incredibly noble, so in honor of this, he would give him a sword that would be named Rising Star. Lihan couldn't believe his eyes, but was this the sword that belonged to those bandits? Is it even normal to give such a thing to a student? The principal asked him to be quiet for a while because there was one more thing he wanted to give his student, permission to leave. This all shocked our main protagonist because really, now he will be able to go out when he wants? He was so happy that he started saying that he would do everything in his power to serve the headmaster. He was incredibly happy, but the headmaster said that now was the time for punishment. He asked not to look at him with such eyes, because this is not a punishment for trying to escape, but a punishment for being caught. Lehan, he is incredibly upset, because he tried to tell him that our hero should have just stood there and watched, while not helping anyone. As soon as the sun rose, our hero found himself in a room from which it was necessary to find a way out until the next rise of the sun. He looked around, and he realized that this was the punishment room, but it didn't look very different from the other rooms, so he immediately lay down on it. There was a knock on his door. It was the little assistant director who handed him a basket of incredible food, which shocked Lion. Because is this really his food for the time of punishment? But the assistant director said it was a gift from the professor, who actually wanted to apologize, and that's when the food started flying right at our main protagonist. The time of punishment passed quite calmly because not only did he eat well, but he was also pleasantly surprised that he would be able to drink tea there. It seemed to him that the battle he participated in was too fierce. He was just lucky to survive, because if he didn't take battle lessons, he definitely wouldn't be able to cope. He even noticed that all of his skills had improved. He realized that the best way to increase his ability level was to get into the extreme situation that he was in. He even feels that if he tried again, he was definitely dead. He realized that he needed to monitor his mana expenditure as often as possible. He just didn't want to end up like the stupidest student. He wondered what else he could do during his incarceration. 
but he noticed a book that was given to him by the headmaster in case he was bored. As soon as he looked at it, he couldn't tell if it was a gift or just another trap. At first, he thought that it was probably a gift from the headmaster himself, but then he thought that it was a trap. He decided to take this book for a trap, but at the same moment the book opened itself, all the words, all the signs from there began to quickly flow into his head. Well, what is it? Does the director really want to teach him something? The headmaster's essence appeared in front of him, asking Lee Hen to name the mage he was thinking of right now. Of course, our main character didn't know anything about such magic. He didn't even study it, and he didn't hear about it. But one phrase still popped up in his head. He called it, impressive steps in development. Even though he didn't know what he said, but the director replied that it was all correct. This all put our main protagonist in an awkward position, because what the hell was going on? What had happened at all? Had the headmaster put some sort of spell on the book? Of course, our hero understood that he could not show anything, but the knowledge about those impressive steps in development. Now it's in his head, even though he doesn't even know how to use them properly. The headmaster was very impressive to our hero, even though Lyon didn't know that the headmaster wanted to teach him personally, but he just couldn't because of his prejudices. While he was thinking about it, he noticed that someone was knocking on the wall. Of course, our main protagonist was interested in who it could be. But the only thing the man behind the wall asked was, what year is our main character in? Lehan was surprised that his neighbor directly asked about this, so he replied that he was in the first year of training. The man behind the wall said that most likely he is working very hard on himself, so the person called himself Golden. It was this name that popped up in the mind of our protagonist, because this name refers to a person who is in the fourth year. But how is this even possible for a fourth-year student who can safely leave the campus? Of course, our hero understood that he was not in a position to talk about this, because he was the person who was caught, and he told his new friend that he was caught while trying to escape from the academy. But as soon as he asked how the Golden One got there in the first place, he said that he got there because he failed the test. Lee Hun couldn't believe it. Was he sent here just because he failed the test? Was the punishment so severe in their school? But Golden asked not to worry so much because this is a normal case, because there are some materials that were needed for the magic test, but he failed all of them because he didn't get them in time. That is why the Golden One snuck into the director's secret vault and took the materials from there, so I was trapped. Of course, for some reason, this calmed down our character, because he just wanted to not focus on the details. He was more interested in the fact that if he didn't want to be in this room anymore, then he told his new neighbor that he thought it would be impossible to use the underground paths now. So he asked if he knew any new escape routes. Gold, on the other hand, did not immediately answer, but asked if it wasn't much Lehan was asking for. Why should he even tell him that? It was at this point that our main character started calling the guards. The Golden One was scared, because if they get to him, then exactly his time spent in this room will be increased. But at the same time he was handed a very delicious food, the guard said that it was all from the room that was next door. Golden could not believe it, because how did our main character manage to get all these things inside this punishment room? But Lehan replied that they were just gifts, so there was no need to worry. Golden. In fact, he didn't know exactly who was in front of him, because if a person could get such things inside the punishment room, then he was definitely some very powerful person. So at that moment, he decided to tell him everything he knew. Golden warned that everything he was about to say, he just heard, but never tried before. Lehan knew that this was all unconfirmed information, but he wasn't in a position to make a choice. So he said that he would decide on his own whether to do it or not. The next day, when Unera came to tell our protagonist about the lecture, she couldn't believe that Tut was still doing his homework while he had free time. But it was at that very moment that they came to a certain shed. He remembered the words of his neighbor who had told him that there was a stable at the peak of the academy. Many people said that it was definitely unusual and some did not know that there was such a thing at all. Golden said that this is a stable for flying creatures. Only teachers can fly them in the area, because these animals have a certain blessing that allows them to leave the academy freely. Lehan knew that if everything he said was true, then even if he went in there, he wouldn't be able to ride this animal so easily. But still, he decided to try, because he is definitely not a complete zero in this. At the same time, he opened the door to the barn and noticed that there was actually an ordinary stable there. Many were afraid of our hero, but definitely not one person. Ratford was standing there. He quickly bowed at Lehan's feet, which made Lehan nervous. Ratford said it was a must-have, which made our protagonist realize that this situation was getting more confusing than before. 
and that there was something Ratford wanted to tell him. The mouse remembered that, just as he had said earlier. He had watched everything while hiding, right after he arrived at that place. Then he looked through all the chests and took out some interesting things. He took out some amazing potions that looked like they could be used. He managed to bring only small ones because he had to hide them in his pockets. Even from the appearance, it is clear that these potions are quite expensive. He can't believe that in such a situation he managed to bring out such expensive and valuable items. Leon said that he was just amazing, which was more than you'd expect from a top thief. And Ratford was very happy and embarrassed by the compliment. The guys decided to find out what they were for. One of them had alcohol in it. The young man was afraid. But Yoner reassured him that it wasn't in all of them. If they want to determine for sure and need to research them. He thanked the thief again, but he didn't have to be prim to give the boy such a gift. The huntress returned, instead of the real words of the guys from her point of view. They said that this new friend of theirs from the Turtle Tower is very useful, and also talented her. And she also thought that they think that they do not need other friends from the Turtle Tower. Lyhan turned around and saw her sitting on the floor upset. She got up and said that since they have a new friend, they don't need her anymore and ran away. They didn't understand her behavior. The girl was reassuring the huntress, but of course she had misunderstood, and this was his servant, not his friend. He said they could take care of the horses now. The horse looked calm, probably just pretending. Considering the way the others were acting, he knew it would happen, so he prepared something. He took out a brush and began to brush the horse, which was very angry. Rather, he was very exhausted, and you can't believe you had to go through so much just to get him scratched. Are other horses the same? The guys were exhausted and beat up, and the situation wasn't much better. But they were already finishing their work, and the guy still wasn't there. It's strange because usually by this time the horses start to open. Maybe Lihan's horse is actually a monster. Given the disgusting nature of the professors, and the fact that they founded the Reign of Terror under the cover of the school, it's quite possible, for example. He might be related to the monster by blood, but they couldn't go that far. The dwarves were talking to his aunt, and he noticed that his ancestors often visited the stables. She's picked out a lot of horses with terrible personalities, but if they really try, the animals will open up to them, and if they try to leaf through them or something, they'll regret it very much, she laughed menacingly. Vardanaz does well, even if the griffin is difficult to control, and if he is more resourceful, he will have a little luck. They will get closer. The dwarf did not understand what was being said. The tea in the teacher's mug boiled and burned her. He asked her if she really talked about the griffin. She didn't have anything to say, but said he might have misheard her. But Keith insisted that she tell the truth. Did she turn the griffin into a horse? The griffin is a monster with the head and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion. Because of their arrogance and selectivity, they do not accept everyone as their master depending on the region. They may have slightly different character and habits, but something is true for everyone. They are not suitable for taming by first years. The teacher was indignant because she had gone mad. His student had already asked for a day off because of his wounds. Why did she force him to go to such madness? My aunt was outraged, because how dare he open his mouth in her direction. There are boundaries that cannot be crossed, unless you can turn a griffin into a horse. She's limited her strength to match that of a horse, so it's safe. Does she think griffins are as stupid as slugs or something? This is how typical gnome family quarrels go. The horse finally began to obey Lee Han. He was wearing both a restraining belt and bracelets because he himself does not like senseless skirmishes. The guy laughed sadly. Judging from the fact that the horse is fine after letting him put all this on himself, he should have more mana than he thought. Maybe there really is something from monsters in his blood. Or just the level of mana absorption is too low. The guy needs to figure out how to increase it. The hero never thought that they would come to talk, because it all started with attempts to tear him to pieces. They really got close. He offered the horse sugar cubes. Whitehorse couldn't bear to admit that she was still more subservient to this guy. But sugar is sweet. She had never tasted anything like it in the wild. You can't give up. The ancient wild blood in her doesn't let you forget about pride. You can't just give up. Although they are getting closer, the guy is still thinking about how to increase the speed of mana absorption by items. The horse didn't react very much. The guy thought that he had tightened the items too much. The morning basic alchemy class wasn't held on the street and it was also held in the Sleepy Horn building, which was separate from the main building. The students entered the study. It was uncomfortable because it was warm and homey. They should be careful and not let themselves be deceived. He could easily hide a couple of monsters in the classroom. The guys were preparing for an attack and wanted to protect her highness. Ashan said that they would definitely not lose, which our hero did not promise. 
The professor was going to tell everyone to take their seats. One of the students asked why they didn't have classes on the street today. Since last time he said that it was important to collect ingredients in the field, the professor replied that he obviously wouldn't create medicine on the street. He understands the children's concerns but says not to worry. Unlike classes on the street, it will be very safe and simple. None of them believed him. Everyone started the lesson. The teacher said that they need to pour water into their cauldron. Alchemy is a complex art. There are no unnecessary stages. If they miss something, they will never become excellent alchemists. They will now prepare a low-level mana regeneration potion. At first glance, alchemy seems easier than other magic. Many people think that it is enough just to follow the written recipe, but this is not the case. Alchemy is like cooking haute cuisine, simultaneously and quickly. You need to collect fresh ingredients from different places, remember how to cook, and in what order. This allows you to keep up with the time. But we must not forget about clear movements. If they miss something, you will get something strange. The professor laughed at him, because they are typical first-year students. When he saw Lehan, his face changed. The guy very clearly and in time did all the instructions. He looked like an alchemist who has been in business for ten years. This angered the teacher. Unless in reality there are such geniuses. That's probably what he thought, he thought. But it's not like that at all. It's just that he's done this kind of thing before in his life. After tasting Lehan's concoctions, the professor felt his entire body being filled with mana and refreshed. It was a very well-made potion. The professor couldn't understand how he didn't know if his mana was restored or not. Usually he has a lot of it. He announced to the students that one of them was able to brew the perfect potion, and it was in Vardanaz. The students were not surprised. This was expected of a genius like him. Ashan did not stop admiring him. Although Siana from the Phoenix Tower also makes a great potion, no one can compare with him. The guy pointed out the Snake People girl, who is also a member of the Freemang Church. Yoner had told him about it before. Their religion worships alchemy. All its members are artificial alchemists, so Siana should also be experienced in this field. She greeted the guy and introduced herself. He introduced himself in return and said that there was no need to be so formal around him, the young man thought. She really creates a potion better than her. The girl had a red hand, probably because she is from the snake tribe. She never thought that she would meet such an experienced believer like him here and asked if he learned all this at home. The teacher told them to stop talking and go back to their seats. He would tell her about it next time. They all tried to make the same potion, but the result was different. They don't have to worry about it. This is just the beginning. There is an even more complex and strange world of alchemists for them. The professors are very strong in killing the student's desire to learn. He wants them to bring a low-grade friendship spirit potion with them by next week. It's a homework assignment. He'll check it out personally, so it's best to pay more attention to this assignment. Now they have to take the menu from the instructions and the main ingredients from the drawer. This is strange. They thought that he would make them sort out the procedures themselves. Well, after all, the professor can teach them something, after all. Yoner didn't have enough ingredients in the box to create such a potion, and Nilly was also missing one ingredient. When the girl asked the professor where they could get the spirit blossom herb, it might have been on the second floor, but he said that they should find it themselves. The basic materials were in their boxes, but the spirit flower grass wasn't there. Pointing to the street, he said they could go find him. He is sure that they all remember what he said to them during the first lecture. The students were shocked. He was sitting and having lunch with a half-demon girl, and she tasted his signature tea and asked if it was a special tea from the house of Vardanaz. The guy replied that it was half soup. It was a little thick for tea, but it was very tasty. The snake girl came up to them. I couldn't believe I'd met a guy here. She was just looking for him. It was about homework. They need to make a low-grade spiritual friendship potion. She thought they could gather the ingredients together. Usually, the students from the Phoenix Tower were afraid of him, and now they came by themselves, even as a whole group. He happily agreed. The girl asked to gather his students from her tower. It would be cool if they worked together. If everything is decided, the girl left. The half-demon asked if he was in a close relationship with his sister Siana, and he told her that they were in the same alchemy class. So what's the big deal? The girl didn't say anything, but the guy insisted. You can't stop when she is about to say something. He will be tormented by curiosity. But it is inappropriate for her to talk about someone behind her back. It may sound like she is talking badly about her. This case was even more interesting. But she's not a person who would agree easily. When he approached and began to pray, the girl asked why he was doing this. And she said that it was hard to talk behind your back. And there is nothing strange if you talk to yourself during prayer. The girl realized that he was trying to get her to talk. He said that he couldn't hear her because he was praying. 
but it wasn't enough for the girl to talk, so he decided to try something else. Once he almost died because of the students from the White Tiger Tower, but Willow was able to survive. If Sian and sister is so crafty as to do such a thing when they go up the mountain, he doesn't even want to think about it, but he's sure he'll be watching him. When the girl also began to pray and tell the Almighty that she was not saying this to slander or accuse someone of something, the guy thanked her, but she prayed and did not hear him. After the prayer, she was upset. While all the priests of the Phoenix Tower are honest and decent people, they have not yet given up all their material desires, even though envy and competitive spirit do not benefit anyone's faith. Last week in the Phoenix Tower, a certain student made a fatigue potion. He tried to make it for everyone. After the potion, none of them feel tired. After it is better than after Siana's potion. She did not approve of making this potion. Up to this point, nothing happened. But the next day, she prepared a potion for fatigue and offered it to her on others. The fatigue after it passed in the blink of an eye. Correction back then, no one thought anything had happened. But the next day and the day after, she was still offering these potions. She wanted recognition from the students. Which priest told her it was wrong, and then she finally stopped. The guy thought that the guys from this tower were competitive, but it didn't end there. After a while, even though the priest had prepared the potion, Siana didn't stop. She still felt that he was competing with her and ignored him. He thought that, then, about the compliment he had received in class, she also considered him an enemy. The girl finished praying, but the guy asked her to tell him more. He didn't understand what she was talking about, but the girl got up and left. He realized that he should be more careful in the alchemy class. He was facing another challenge in the basic magic class of the temperament lesson. The director said that they should all live in harmony and love each other. What they want, they don't matter. Their homework assignment was to bring the flag of his tower, which he placed in the new student guest room. There are symbols on the flag that they can use to easily distinguish their own. You need to bring it to the next lesson. The lecture is over. The students did not like this lesson, in fact. The principal asks them to fight everything on their own. Then there is no point in this lesson. Their flag was with the words, white tigers. The words obviously don't work with these teachers. The tiger flag was also with the words. The students wanted to try to exchange flags if they agree. They are still barbarians. You should drop the honor of letting everything go by itself. But in any case, this is homework. Students' decisions are not very good for our hero. He will not allow them to behave like this. Refusing homework would mean giving up grades at the academy. Although no one knows what other crazy homework assignments this academy might give you in the future, even now they are quite difficult. But he can't let his high school grades slip away like that. He appealed to the participants not to give up, and the girl asked if they had any plan. The students very quickly changed their attitude. Ashan assumed with 95% probability that he wanted to break into the White Tiger Tower. And so it was. The other team members approved of his decision and said they would go after him, since there was no one else who would come up with a plan. Yoner and Lehan laughed, because these guys don't want to do anything but obey. The guys quickly picked up their fighting spirit and were ready to cover the tigers to pieces. Such tasks of the director will obviously not help anyone to become more temperamental. In the morning, our hero took a walk, the sun was rising from behind the mountains, and the time for completing homework was approaching. He had no idea whose homework assignment was more difficult, so he opened the door to the half-vampire's office. The teacher slammed the book he was reading and said that Lee Han was 11 seconds late. At this point, our hero Tudu immediately began to apologize to the teacher, saying that he was very ashamed of his tardiness. But the teacher immediately said that now there is no need to apologize during the day, because the only one who loses something here is our hero. Of course, our character didn't like hearing this, but he couldn't say anything out loud. While he was thinking about how to respond, the teacher already asked him to start training, asking him to first create a magic that could spin an iron ball around our protagonist. All this seemed to our character at the last training session, because all he does is spin the ball around. The teacher, after looking at the new result, said that this is enough, so all you need to do now is sit down in your usual place. Our hero was very grateful for this answer, because he did not think that he would be told that he was doing well, this is even too rare for such a teacher. As soon as the ball was placed and the student sat down at the table, the teacher asked if the student had actually learned how to create water using magic yet. It was at this point that our protagonist took off with his hands and raised the ball of water above him. Of course, he thought that now he could easily complete any tasks, after all, he had already been taught a lot by other teachers. But the vampire only asked to reduce this ball. Everything seemed much easier than in practice, so the ball just couldn't condense minute by minute. But just at that moment, when nothing worked out, the vampire simply took an iron ball in his hands and used magic to shoot it directly at our main character. Our protagonist couldn't believe that this teacher was doing this at all. 
However, this ball did not even hit him, because somehow, but the water ball of our character could decrease in size while holding back the professor's iron ball. But would he have to do this every time now? Wouldn't it be dangerous? But the teacher only responded to this in his own way, saying that even if it was dangerous, it was still very effective, because he was sure that our main character had already experienced this before in battles against other magicians or just wizards. He should have been able to feel his brain starting to work faster every second, his mana control increasing. This is the feeling that only happens when your life is in danger. Why, then, does our character even want to go the long way and when you can just train in this way? Our hero just couldn't believe his ears, because is his teacher really going to do this again and again? Would he just want to kill him? Of course, the teacher noticed that his student understood his words, so our protagonist just kept trying to shrink the water ball in size. He knew that in order to get a better result, he needed to get it in shape and not worry about any small things. Everything went on for a very long time, so the teacher just threw the steel ball again. Our character was able to react, he thought that everything turned out right for him. But another ball was flying at him from behind, piercing his back. The teacher immediately asked me to be much more focused. It was at this point that our main character realized that doing homework from class is much more pleasant than just training with this teacher. By the time the next day arrived, many of the students were either talking about other tower students or just going there with other teachers. Of course, they looked at our main protagonist, who looked very creepy, but they just didn't know that he was just very tired. Our hero, in turn, thought that they just want to make friends with him. While everyone was thinking about their own thoughts, the teacher came in and said that from today on, they would start learning her mental magic, but now it wouldn't be her who would teach them, because she had brought another teacher. The class immediately exploded, they wanted to learn a lot of things, healing, spells, potions. But as soon as the teacher asked another teacher to come in, the entire classroom immediately became very cold. It was at this moment that Mortem, the new teacher who teaches black magic, introduced himself. It is black magic, as it was clear to everyone, that studies the fact that you can summon inanimate creatures, spells, the use of all sorts of poisons, or negative energy. Black magic is a type of magic that many people try to avoid, or just learn as best they can. Many people were even just scared by the mere presence of a black magician around them. By that time, we can imagine that in front of us our already familiar main character approaches some students who are lost. They asked him if he was a magician. But at the same time, our character said that if they were lost, he could help them. He immediately summoned the skeleton and asked it to follow him. Of course, many people will simply be afraid of such an outcome, or even worse, they will faint. It was many new students who thought this way, they were very scared. After all, why should they even learn this type of magic? They thought that many people would speak ill of them. The teacher said that she understood their resentment, but black magic is so mystical that it is very valuable. After all, in front of her now were uncut diamonds that were supposed to study what they really wanted and valued. She said that everyone would have to choose their own path, especially the path of a magician, so it definitely doesn't affect them if they start learning black magic. The teacher asked who really wanted to be Mortem's assistant today, but no one raised a hand. Our main character was about to raise his hand, but his neighbor immediately nailed him to the desk, saying that he could become a kind of doll that would carry out all sorts of unpleasant orders. However, it was at this point that our protagonist expressed that he always wanted to have the abilities of a black magician with him, because since childhood many people dreamed of learning it in order to get good grades. Of course, his neighbor couldn't believe that anyone would even want to become a black magician. Our character said that it is certainly very dangerous, but still the life of a black magician is not so bad. She may be less popular than everyone else, but he still wants to become an assistant to Lemnoto. The teacher was delighted, because Leanne still wanted to become an assistant. Of course, our hero understood what the teacher feels, because no one would want to feel the same feeling when you invite a guest to your class and no one wants to help you. Mortem was also a bit happy with it, so go ahead as quickly as possible. By the time Leham reached the stage, he understood why it was so cold in the hall at all, he realized that it was all because of the energy flowing inside Mortem. After all, as long as magic is fundamentally non-elementalist, then their elements can be changed using different types of magic. It was cold and dark that were the symbols of black magic, so there was no reason to worry about the feeling of such mana. The first words of Mortem were that our protagonist has a very large amount of magic, to which our hero replied only thank you. Mortem immediately said that it was time to start the lesson, so after activating his ability, all sorts of dead people began to appear in a second. The entire class immediately started screaming in terror, many telling them to leave. But to their surprise, the dead simply grabbed their hands and began to spin. Mortem said that he had been preparing for a very long time to show this performance, and even a slightly noticeable blush of pleasure appeared on his cheeks. Our character just couldn't find the words, but still, to support Mortem and his teacher, he said that everything was very interesting. 
By that time, the old man had asked me to finish the extravagance, saying that it was time to start real lessons. Many students were very happy that all the monsters were finally gone. But our protagonist only thought that the performance of magic was good, but did he show all this just because he wants our main character to be able to repeat it? Moradam was thinking the same thing, but said that he would not ask him to repeat anything, because this magic is quite difficult for a novice like him. Our Lehan breathed a sigh of relief, because he knew that if teacher Vlad heard this, he would definitely make her repeat it until it worked out. It was at this point that Mortem said that you can try to transform your mana into one of the elements, which should definitely work. Our hero took out his magic wand and tried to get ready to use mana, but the only thing the teacher did was just laugh softly, because even for Lehan, it wouldn't be so easy. Of course, mages had to go through a long and training process to be able to imagine the element in question, because it all depended on experience. After all, if the magician starts to think about something shakily, then a cold phenomenon will appear. If one thinks of darkness, a black element will appear. That is why this type of magic is quite difficult to master. Even if Lehan tried to do it, he would have to look at the other students. However, the teacher was still thinking. That Lehan wouldn't inspire much hope, she noticed that behind her, our character was able to recreate this element. This was the power that our character was able to get in two worlds. He just had to think of magic as mathematical pictures, so it was probably just like the visual art of figures in his head. Mortem was also happy, so he wanted to give him more tasks and abilities to repeat. Of course, the teacher who saw and watched how our hero did everything was simply horrified. She understood that if her student was very good at something somewhere, then it was good, but definitely not so much. After all, even if he retrains as a black magician, it will be bad. She thought for a long time, and then tried to calm herself down by saying that her student was definitely still independent of this type of magic. However, at that moment, I looked at Mortem and Lehan and noticed a very scary scene. Our protagonist continued to cast spells until the teacher had to say stop. But Mortem seemed to go off the rails, and his eyes filled with blood. He said that if his assistant could hold on to the spell any longer, he should just continue. Of course, our hero was scared by this, but he could still see that the teacher behind him was happy with the situation. Of course, there was so much mana in the area that many students began to feel the effects of this type of magic. The teacher asked what would happen next. However, Mortem only said that it would be much more interesting just to test what he was capable of before starting the next stage. The teacher asked him to check it out again next time. But Mortem was upset, he wanted to continue, so the teacher had to give him a little hint with her threatening look that it was worth finishing. Mortem immediately realized that he couldn't handle it, so he asked me to finish. Our character did not understand what to do with the one that was around. But all Mortem said was that you just had to wave your wand in such a way that you could summon paralysis. It is this low-grade skill that allows you to cause paralysis, this is the lowest ability, but who can use this curse on? rather than the students. But at the same time, Mortem asked not to worry, because this curse can be used on him. At first, our protagonist couldn't believe it. But judging by the teacher's face, and his own long-standing desire to use magic on the teacher, they took it up. Before doing everything, he asked if everything was really alright. But Mortem once again said that everything is fine. Of course, our hero also calmed himself, saying that such a student dot how he is more comparable to a chick that tries to squeak at its mother. Our Lehan immediately waved his wand and pointed it at the teacher, who thought that the level of such a student was so low that there would definitely be nothing. He was thinking that after our character tried and failed, he would be happy to be his student, so that's how the situation would pick up momentum, and most likely he would even go looking for him after school. But by that time, a huge blob of black and sinister mana began to gather over our character's wand. No one could believe it, but a second later, paralysis was used on the professor, who did not expect this. A moment later, the professor was sprawled on the floor with the feeling that he was about to throw his legs away. Lehan immediately became afraid, because now he would definitely become a criminal once again. But at the same time, Mortem just started getting up and addressing the class, saying that this is exactly what low-level paralysis looks like. Our hero exhaled with a calm soul, because the atmosphere up to that moment was definitely heating up. The teacher, in turn, only thought that there was definitely something wrong, because such a huge area of mana that was poured into Mortem definitely should not have touched him so calmly. Of course, the professor might not have used protection, but it would still be worth asking. Sure enough, she went up to Mortem and asked if mana had seen him, or if it was pain. However, Mordu only said that there was nothing wrong, and then turned around so that the teacher could see his trembling hand, which made it clear to her that he simply could not expect such a large amount of mana and magic from a new student. He was actually under the influence of Rookie Maya. Of course, at the same time, Mordum turned to our character and said that he was talented. 
Our hero thanked him, but Mortem repeated it again, looking intently into his eyes, which could put every student in a very uncomfortable position. Was he that bad at all? But the professor doesn't want to talk about it. Of course, our protagonist thought that if he had been a good student from the very beginning, he would have done even better, but by that time the teacher said that it was time to start thinking about black magic, because as they all have already seen, but it's not so difficult to be able to use it such low-level spells, which is also effective. This will definitely be another advantage for them in battle. This is what can protect them. So the best way to understand how to do something against a particular magic is to start learning it. They must all work hard to learn different types of magic. As soon as Argero sat down at the desk, for some reason the teachers looked at each other, and then, with the consent of Mortem, mass teleportation was immediately used. The students noticed a bright glow and could not understand what was wrong, but at the same time they found themselves on the street in front of the training building. Of course, the teacher knew that everyone must have been very surprised by this, but since it was worth training with each of them, she moved all of them to a place where they could do all of this. Of course, everyone was very happy about it, because now they could train there without any interference, they even idolized their teacher. Lehan, for his part, noted that the whole atmosphere was actually much more lively than it had been before. The students were much more eager to study than before, so teacher Garcia was much better than everyone expected. Sure enough, minutes later, after Garcia asked everyone to pair up, the sword control class started. Our protagonist was sure that he was well prepared from the last training session, as the other boy also said. Of course, the rules were quite simple, because when someone starts attacking, they change sides, trying to just defend or repel this magic. One of the students immediately began to convert mana into a negative element, which surprised our main character very much, because he could not cope with the most ordinary magic before, and now he copes so gracefully, did that student really have a talent for black magic? Or was it because it was just easy? Mortem, in turn, noticed another talented student as soon as he activated paralysis, which for some reason almost did not even touch our main character, but still gave him an idea of how it works. The disciple was very happy about this, but for some reason, he noticed that Lehan was acting as usual. Of course, our protagonist said that he wasn't very sure, but it seems to him that the magic almost didn't work on him. The apprentice thought that there was something wrong with his magic, but at the same time, Lehan started giving him advice, telling him to just do things differently. But at the same time, Garcia intervened, saying that the disciple did very well, but the curse did not work on Lehan because he had too much mana. Of course, the student even after this said that most likely he has no talent in this, and he does not want to continue doing something in this direction. It was at this point that our protagonist's turn came up, and now he used this curse on someone. He immediately started concentrating on controlling his mana and knew better than to use as much mana as possible. He had to use as little as possible, so a second later, he immediately threw a charge into the air. Mortem simply couldn't believe his eyes that a disciple could think of such a use of mana. He knew that the more he did this, the more he could do it to the mage. He was thinking that it was quite difficult for a low-level mage like him. It was at this point that the charge flew out of the one, so the student just started screaming, trying to escape from the charge. Leon asked him what had just happened, was he trying to dodge? But the boy only said that he did it on an instinctive level, he did not know it himself. Mortem was shocked once more during the day, because he couldn't believe that the student said that he wanted to dodge, because not only was he able to quickly get used to using black magic for the first time, but also just feel it on a subconscious level and try to dodge. What's his name? Is there really a genius who is born once every ten years in front of him now? Of course, the Urquois also ended up sleeping without incident, many just kept using their curses on each other, and also just had a good time. Garcia immediately clapped her hands and said that if everything went well, you should just start applauding the professor and say that everyone enjoyed the class. Since everyone was having fun, Gracia asked if they all liked black magic. But the students just kept quiet, so Garcia asked Mortem to say his words. He, in turn, said that he believes everyone that many people have studied this slaughter, but it seems to him that there are students who show simply incredible results. No one was sure of themselves, so they thought it was all a joke. However, just at this moment, Mortem pointed at the same disciple who was paired with Lehan. He just couldn't believe it. After all, did he do something wrong? But it was at this moment that our hero was also called to the office. Immediately, many students began to approach Kain and say that they were very worried about him. You just had to tell the teacher that he might be in danger. But right at that moment, Kane only said that if he went there, he would take them with him. Sure enough, at that moment, a magic workshop appeared in front of our eyes, which was more like a research room. Many of the so-called students continued to conduct some kind of research without any time for their personal lives. Of course, many people may think that this is all wrong, but in fact everything is as described. It is this information that has been hammered into the head of our main character since childhood, while he was studying at home. He certainly didn't believe these stories, 
but now he could personally see that dark stone building in front of his own eyes. But had Morton called them there, Kane couldn't figure out if he had done something wrong to be summoned to the teacher's office. He was very scared, but our protagonist said that's probably not why they're both standing under the tower right now. Kane couldn't figure out what else it could be, were all black magicians so strange. However, as soon as Lehan knocked on the door, it opened by itself, which caused even more indignation in Kain. Of course, our hero said that he thinks that everything is very strange, because he does not see any smoke, and also the professor. Of course, at that moment we could see Mortem sitting at his desk, he noticed that his students had come to see him, so he asked Dyer to bring them to him. Dyer, in turn, said that the head of the department had forbidden inviting new students, but Mortem only said that even if it was a bad idea, you could just do it in secret. Dyer couldn't believe it because it had been a long time since he had been in prison. But the teacher just said that nothing will really happen, just calm down. It was at this moment that Mortem waved his wand and immediately all the smoke was removed from the entire room. Everyone was shocked, because they did not expect that this tower would look so good inside. But what kind of design was it? Don't black magicians wear robes or anything like that? But as soon as they looked closely, they noticed a teacher standing in front of them, who asked if they knew why he had called them to him. Kane immediately said that he knew, because they probably did something wrong. But the teacher interrupted him and said that he had summoned them because they were actually talented in black magic. Of course, Kane said he was very surprised at this, but he couldn't believe that he was even talented at anything. Did he really have the talent? Lehane, for his part, was sure that it was all moral, but at the same time, Kane couldn't calm down and then asked what he should do. Of course, while Mortem was explaining everything, he handed over a few candies and said that they should chew a little while they listened to him. Of course, he said that he had called two of them because they were both talented in black magic, so he would have wanted to talk to them a lot more than they had given him in class. After all, he said that studying black magic would be a pleasure for people like them, because they would probably be able to become incredible experts. Of course, this was all very surprising to hear, because almost always they heard that teachers did not like to do this, because they were too arrogant and thought that they would not waste their time. Many did not know what to do, because they simply could not get more knowledge where they could show something. Of course, this situation reminded our character of the old days in another world, but there was nothing he could do. Of course, after Kane left the tower, he was much more satisfied than usual. He thought he was the happiest member of the family on planet Earth to be considered talented in magic. Our protagonist noticed this because in fact it was very strange. Of course, we see again what happened in the workshop of the professor, who gave our characters a bone and said that it should be kept in his room because it is a gift for his students. He was very pleased that he was able to give such a gift, but our protagonists could not imagine what this bone was for at all. Why did such an aura radiate from this book at all, and is it really something like the very book that was given a chapter? Was this really a surprise from their new teacher, Mortem? However, while Lehan was still thinking, Kane turned to them and told them that it was better not to tell everyone about what happened there in the tower. Of course, our character knew that it would actually be better to keep it a secret, because if they told about it, then Kane might start being bullet again. He promised that he would definitely not tell anyone, because that's exactly what friends do. By that time, we have a training session again. Many students run around in circles, and the teacher keeps telling them to use mana to breathe as deeply as possible, because only through this can you strengthen their skills not only magical, but also physical. Of course, mana can be used in different situations, because everything that circulates in your body can help you not get tired or get faster. So as soon as Lehan ran past the teacher, he asked if you need to take some advice if you want to go to the mountains. However, at the same time, the teacher became wary and said that his advice would be to just not go there, because this is not just a place where there are a huge number of monsters, but also that no teacher knows what to do there. Those students doubt that they decide to go there, just fools. However, at the same time, our protagonist said that he doesn't want to go there just because he wants to, but simply because one of his studies requires an ingredient from the other side. Of course, at that moment, the teacher said that since this was another teacher's building, it was necessary to approach the matter from a different angle, but then he noticed that Leanne wasn't tired, so he probably learned mana circulation. Of course, our character admitted that this is true, because if you choose mana in yourself and release it into the air, then this is exactly how circulation occurs, but you can also do this from outside your body. This was exactly what Lehan was all about, he understood that he could just use his huge amount of mana to let everything out around him instead of circulating. Of course, the teacher thought about it, because it makes sense even if you just inhale your mana. But there was still one thing to think about. It was worth thinking about the fact that if a person has an infinite supply of mana, then they can choose their own method of use. The teacher realized that he could not forbid him to use this type of mana circulation, but asked him to use what he had taught him in his lesson. 
Of course, the teacher understood that it was quite difficult to concentrate mana around him with such a huge amount, but still, since many people were already tired, he asked Leanne to increase the difficulty and stay for another 10 laps. Of course, our protagonist could not understand, because why do teachers always do this? However, as soon as our Leanne bent down to thank teacher for such a nice favor, the teacher said that he would go to the mountains with him to get his ingredients. Of course, our character couldn't believe it. After all, just recently the teacher said that it is better not to do this. But the teacher only said that he just likes walking. But what he really thought was that it was still worth keeping an eye on everything that was going on in those mountains. By that time, Arlian had come to a certain girl and borrowed some alchemy tools from her. He just wanted to test a few of the potion's effects on himself. Of course, the girl also noticed that something strange was going on, did our hero put a field around their house? But Lehan only said that he had heard that this trip might take a long time, so he did it as early as possible. But the girl once again pointed ahead and made it clear to our protagonist that something was wrong, because the plants grew incredibly fast, which made it clear to Lehan that most likely he was given a new variety of plants. Of course, this was definitely not the case. It was because the professor had given him a staff that was incredibly good for farming, so by that time they were already out of the building, thinking only about how many things they had brought with them. By that time, they had arrived at the tower and started looking at all the items they had brought with them. They even spent the whole night checking all the potions they had received. They even had a potion that allowed them to start singing like you were a mermaid. So far, however, both of them have been discussing what they don't have and what they do have. Just then, a guy came up to them and asked if everyone was ready. It was then that our hero realized that everything that he was ready to do almost happened, because a little later he will return from the forest with friends, and the very next day he will use the pass to leave the academy. However, at the same time, the guy asked, what do they think about visiting the black market before going to the forest? However, as soon as they thought about it, Thor miraculously found themselves in a school market that looked more like a real market than a black one. But at the same time, our character noticed his friend who was playing cards for bread. He immediately noticed Arlihan as well, running up to it and scaring away all the people. He said that this place uses bread as a currency. After all, when they collect one thing, they can exchange it for another, because many people could not eat anything, so they came up with this method, as if saving drowning people. Our main character was interested in all this, so he decided, like other products, to take a closer look. He noticed that there were a lot of things that could be used, but the most important thing was that under all the products were incredible artifacts. That's how this video ends. If you have sat through to the end, please don't forget to press the subscribe button and leave feedback. See you in the next video.